for Syracuse at Maryland a week ago. These folks were anticipating undefeated and undefeated off a 10 win Syracuse season a year ago. That hasn't happened. But if it's less noisy than might have been anticipated a week ago, that doesn't seem to have materialized tonight. Sterling Hoffrichter kicks off. And Joseph Ngata, the true freshman, takes an E. Thought about coming out and then thought better of it. So here comes the 19-year-old sophomore from Cartersville, Georgia, Trevor Lawrence, as you saw a moment ago, undefeated 13-0 as a starting quarterback. It's his 19th career game. He played in every game the first four of last season behind Kelly Bryant before the coach decided he was the better man to be the starter. Yeah, he's put some weight on. He's stronger. Coaches have challenged him to become more of a leader in these kind of conditions, assert himself, and let this team know that they can turn to him. Dealing with deafening noise under the roof of the dome. It's steamy inside the dome for a building that used to be named for an air conditioning company. There is no air conditioning in here. A quick hitter to Justin Ross. And the sophomore stumbles down. After a brief gain of two, here's a look at tonight's Chick-fil-A impact players. And yeah, they got to have, we talked about balance in the open, and that's what they're going to have to do. T. Higgins and Travis Etienne running the football. Coleman, we talked about his ability to rush the quarterback. And also you see Andre Sisco, number seven, an important player in the back end of Syracuse. He led the nation in interceptions last year. It's a run with Etienne. He gets stacked up. There is a flag down along the line of scrimmage on the far side of the field. Evan Foster led the way for the Syracuse defense with help from Andrew Armstrong. Marcus Woods is the referee. Offside, defense, number 45, lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, second down. Kenneth Ruff, the defensive tackle. That's a big difference for Dino Babers tonight as compared to a year ago. They had two veteran defensive tackles in McKinley Williams, who's injured. And Chris and, Layton, who has departed. And a mental mistake for Syracuse early. That would have set up a third and about five. And instead, five three yards for Lawrence to now put him at second and short. With ETN on his right hip. And the pass batted down, incomplete. Alton Robinson swatted away a ball intended for the tight end, J.C. Chalk. And they're trying to read the safeties to determine this will be happening all night. If the safeties come down into the run game, they're going to get the ball to the outside. It's the right read. But Alton Robinson, with that length, gets up at 6'4 to knock the ball down. So good read by Trevor. Just a better play there by Robinson. Hasn't been a completely smooth start for Lawrence in this offense, despite the 2-0 record. Syracuse brings pressure. It's well picked up, but the pass is low. Intended for Justin Ross with Evan Foster in coverage. Dabo Sweeney told us they tend to blitz us more than Syracuse blitzes other teams, and they bring pressure early on a key third down. They sure did, and, and we talked in the open, what would Brian Ward as a defensive coordinator do? And we talked about mixing up the looks on third down that time. They brought everybody, roll the dice, take chances, bring one more than they can handle, and they're off the field. Will Spires to punt. Veteran punter. 32nd career start, Sean Riley, dangerous return man, back for the Cuse. High spiral, fair catch made by Riley at the 25-yard line. 44-yard punt. Here comes the Syracuse offense under Tommy DeVito, redshirt sophomore out of Cedar Grove, New Jersey. Highly recruited player out of Don Bosco Prep of perennial power in New Jersey and it's been an up and down first two games against Liberty and Maryland for him and you know Eric Dunchy leaves as a four year starter really a dynamic leader a guy that could throw and also a guy that could run DeVito they say is a great athlete they, they sh he's shown that in some scrimmages but really known for his ability to distribute the football as a passer very strong throwing arm they start with Mo Neal 
their leading rusher. And he's up the middle for five to the 30 yard line. Boy, Sean, that is a big part of what they want to do tonight. Establish that inside presence of the running game with Neal and Adams. And they want to go fast. That's the trademark of Dino Babers' offense. Trying to hit a deep ball, and it's incomplete. Intended for Tristan Jackson with Nolan Turner, the safety, in good coverage. Boy, that is outstanding play by Nolan Turner. They pick on a safety one-on-one -on -one with their top wide receiver. That's a win, right? Watch 24 recover in phase and gets that left arm. He reads the receiver's eyes. When the receiver looks for the ball, he gets his body turned and that left arm up. Outstanding coverage. And here's third down and five. They rush four. DeVito got it off, and it's off the hands of Taj Harris, who had a chance to make an early big play, and it's incomplete. And that's been one of the problems for Syracuse. They just haven't been clicking in the passing game. No fault of DeVito there. That oh. should have been caught. And DeVito put it right between the safety and the linebacker. Muse and Chad Smith, they brought pressure. Brent Venables dialing it up with Isaiah Simmons, and DeVito sensed it, got the ball out on time, and we're un just unable to hold on to it by Taj Harris. Sterling Hoffrichter, one of the best punters in the country, hangs it very high. Marion Kendrick, fair catch. And Clemson will start for the second time on offense from its own 21-yard line. 49-yard putt. By the fifth year centered coverage of tonight's game, streaming live on ESPN3 and the ESPN app. You get Skycam, you get a look at both coaches, you get the stats, you get a lot. Clemson on offense for the second time. Each team has had it once and putted. Trevor Lawrence, one for three on the opening possession. Travis Etienne behind her to the left. He gets the handoff. And bursts ahead across the 25 for a five-yard gain. Trill Williams, the nickel, made the tackle. Interesting approach so far by Brian Ward. I would call it a very aggressive approach with a lot of blitzing coming after the line of scrimmage. Four wide receivers. Three wideouts and the tight end. Chalk split out to the right. Etienne, the running back. Lawrence trying to communicate. Against the din here in the sold out dome. He throws deep and incomplete, intended for Justin Ross. Well, trying to flag is down, perhaps against Efatu Melifonwu for pass interference. Pass interference, defense number 23, 15 yard penalty, automatic. You know, the, the reason I disagree with this call is because of the way Melifonwu gets his head turned. There's no there's no foul there. See how his head is turned? I mean, if anything, they're pushing back and forth. I, I think that's a no call. Clemson catches a break there and picks up the first down. That's going to be a good matchup tonight between the corner and the lengthy receivers. Melifonwu has the size to compete with those big wideouts. He's 6'3". Lawrence's pass batted down again at the line of scrimmage. They are bringing the heat on first and 10. Now, I know they, they've got five defensive backs in. They're trying to match up with the speed. They get a tip because of the blitz at the line of scrimmage by Armstrong. One of the blitzing linebackers, 12, gets his hand up. Look, even the hits, I mean, they're coming after Clemson. What do they have to lose? come after him. That's, that's the right mentality with this kind of crowd playing at home. High snap, Lawrence. And whistles are stopping the play. Flag on the near sideline. And now some extracurriculars. Akeem Williams and Travis Etienne. Ball start. Offense number 59. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Gage Cervenka, the right guard. When we talked to the coaches during the week, they said they're looking for better play from him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and what, watch this give you an idea right here. Boom! That, that's the mentality. You talked about how many points they gave up last week at Bird Stadium against Maryland. This is a different Syracuse defense tonight. Incredibly motivated to go up against the number one ranked team in the country. It was a 10-win Syracuse team last year. Entered with high hopes, ranked in the preseason for the first time since 1998. It's been a surprisingly poor start. T. Higgins the catch and a first down. 
as Clemson, the first team to cross midfield tonight on a 16-yard gain. So watch the linebackers, watch how aggressive this group is, and then you have the cushion out here. The answer is the Clemson coaches are saying, listen, they're coming after us. Let's get the ball out of Trevor's hands quickly with that soft cushion. Let's just take those easy throws. Three receivers to the left. ETN remains the running back. Here's another quick throw on target to T. Higgins. Out of bounds at the 41-yard line with Christopher Frederick in coverage. And one of the things that that can do is, number one, it eliminates those defensive ends from getting to Lawrence, to linebackers that are blitzing. And also, it's going to make the defensive coordinator, Brian Ward, think twice about these early down blitzes from those linebackers. And it opens up other aspects of the Clemson playbook. Lawrence, 6'6", 220 pounds. And turned 20 years old in early October. Play fake, quick pass, first down and more. Amari Rogers banged down at the Syracuse 25 by Andre Sisco and Lakeem Williams. Hey, hey, Sean, look at Dabo. He sees a look that he wants. He wants to make Trevor sees that he's got the matchup to the field. He's got the numbers. He pulls the ball out, gets the ball out there where Dabo's telling, throw it out here. They get the numbers, and there's big yards. 16-yard game. Clemson on the move. Lawrence keeps it and gets nine on first down. We visited with him last week before the Texas A&M game. He said one of his primary goals in the offseason become a better runner, a little more explosive. And yeah. the coaches talk about how he can run. You saw that last week. We've seen glimpses of that the, the first couple of weeks. And he is an incredibly athletic quarterback. He's looked at as more of a passer, but he can go. And I love how they sprinkle in the zone read to keep that defensive end honest from collapsing down on ETM. On second and one, they fake the quick pass to the right, and it's a touchdown. Amari Rogers, beautiful design and execution of that play for a 16-yard touchdown. Well, this is what, again, the answer to Clemson. Give their offensive staff a lot of credit. If you're going to collapse down, they're going to try to do this little shuttle, and then go, they're tacking that safety right there. Watch how he just does. He's almost like he's setting up. I'm going to block. Goes right by an aggressive safety in Cisco, who was anticipating that Amari Rodgers was just coming out there to stalk block him. He disguised it, snuck behind him, and a great throw by Trevor Lawrence. And the extra point up and good by B.T. Potter. Amari Rogers, just 166 days removed from tearing his ACL in late March with his first touchdown of the season. By Syracuse to lead innovative programs designed to empower those who have served. B.T. Potter kicks off. And Sean Riley will not try to return it. And speaking of veterans, very sad day here on the Syracuse campus with the passing of Don Waffle on Thursday night at the age of 103. World War II veteran, captioned by the Germans and held as a prisoner of war. He did not miss a single home game in the Carrier Dome since it opened in 1980. It had missed only three home games since 1945. Well known here, Kirk, he was the president of the Syracuse Chiefs minor league baseball team for 35 years. I had the great pleasure to work for him as his broadcaster back in the 80s. Wow. And one of the nicest people I've ever met and much loved here. And they had a moment of silence for him before the game. He won a veteran's award from the university last night. That's great. So eager to be there for it. Amazing that he made it to 103 and unfortunately died the night before he was to receive that great honor but our condolences to the waffle fan. yeah I, I know from reading up this week and preparing for this broadcast and listening to you and even bill Bennell, who's a syracuse alum uh I, I know how special he was to so many people mo neal carries there's a personal foul against clemson on the kickoff so that's why the ball came out to the 40. Remember what Syracuse tried to do in that first series, running the ball into the interior of that Clemson defensive line and also taking shots, trying to get the one-on-one -on -one matchups. Taj Harris went in motion. They try Neal on the run again. He's stuffed after getting back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Brent Venables has an interesting 
challenge this year when you lose four dominating defensive linemen. You're breaking in some new faces that are taking over that are very capable, but they're learning on the fly. He's got more veteran experience now on the back end than the front end. And flags prior to the snap. Or a false start against Syracuse. Snap infraction. Offense number 68. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Well, I saw you on game day this morning talking about this matchup. You thought the biggest concern for Syracuse, the offensive line. Their starting center, Sam Heckel, injured. They've had to move people all over the Think place. about that. You lose a starting center, you think, okay, we got to back up. He's young. We'll put him in. No, no, no. Not here. Left tackle, starting left tackle, moves to center where he has some experience. Starting right tackle goes all the way to left tackle, and the backup right tackle now is starting. So effectively, it's three different positions. DeVito. Right on cue, running for his life, and Isaiah Simmons took him down at the 30-yard line. There is a flag thrown back behind the line of scrimmage for a holding call against Syracuse that'll be turned down. Holding, offense, number 57. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Box up with Niles Pinckney, 44, just grabs the jersey right in front of the referee. Easy call. But Syracuse self-destructing, dropped football in the first series. Penalty has set them back against this defense? You want to help Clemson's defense? Dino Babers is thinking, guys, we just have to execute. Just play our game. Off Richter to punt. Kendrick back deep again, very high. And Kendrick got away from it. And Syracuse downs it at the 23-yard line. 46-yard punts. ETN, the ball carrier on first down for Clemson. They lead 7 to nothing. Well, you've had a heck of a weekend. Biggest award you can receive here as an alum. I know it's been a very special a couple days for you, and it will go all the way through until Monday. I appreciate that. Yes, the George Aarons Award goes back to 1939 yeah. here on campus. It's the highest alumni honor that the university bestows, and I was one of the recipients this year, and still trying to figure out why, but <laughs> I'm not going to ask. Well questions. deserved, man. Just well going to say thank you. Trevor Lawrence lobs it up. Joseph Ngata, the freshman. Well covered by Antoine Cordy. And here's, well, I'm sorry. It's hard to talk about yourself in a situation well, like that. I, I wasn't there. I was in Ames, but I know I've talked with a lot of people, including Bill Bennell and others that were there. And I know, uh, in talking to you leading up to this weekend, I know what this place means to you on a personal level and for them to be able to recognize what you've been able to accomplish. I, I can only imagine what the emotions were going through you. Yeah, it was a very time. emotional night. I uh, had trouble getting through the speech several times. You saw Chancellor Sigaru, who presented me with the award. Lawrence pressured, throws deep, and they win the jump ball as they so often do. T. Higgins, 6'4", 215 pounds with a big play, 35 yards. Well, this is what Dabo Sweeney personally told him that he wants him to get better. Extending plays and then look at the height advantage of T. Higgins makes the play. They're going to add 15 yards. See the late hit, the push right here by Jonathan who pushes him in the back after he makes the throw. But the ability to extend the play, the athletic ability of Trevor Lawrence, there's the late hit. And then T. Higgins with that six Four length goes up and over the smaller defensive back and just like that Clemson all the way down to the 20 23 yard line and they tack on a roughing the passer penalty that takes them to the 23 against Kingsley Jonathan so they scored a touchdown on their last drive and they're threatening to do so again. Clemson at the 23 of Syracuse midway through the first half. ETN. He's added some muscle in the offseason and able to break tackles even better than he did a year ago. He's a very well put together 5'10", 210. No doubt. He used to just be fast. And last year he started to get stronger. And this year, even stronger and more patient. And poor, you know, think about defending these guys. We talked about it in the open. You worry about Lawrence and the vertical pass game and what they can do with that, 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 that lethal passing attack. And then you got to still remember that number nine's back there. They give it to number nine again. And he breaks tackles. Several Syracuse defenders there. They couldn't get him on the ground. 
And it's a first down for Clemson, just shy of the 10-yard line. One of the greatest things you can say about a running back is that he runs angry. And I think that's where Travis Etienne has really developed. I think, like any backs, they burst onto a scene with their physical raw ability, and then they just continue to grow and learn. Tony Elliott and other coaches have done an amazing job with him. But, man, he runs with conviction now as a junior. Well, Jennings, Louisiana, big hole. And he's tripped up just shy of the end zone. He didn't score a rushing touchdown last week. That was the first time in seven games that he didn't score a rushing TD. Kendall Coleman tripped him up and saved the touchdown. And now ETN is not getting up. We could talk about how he... He runs with with that conviction with that reckless abandoned attitude and looked like the safety Cisco came in and hit him and maybe their shoulder it looks like right on the shoulder. Kentucky over on ESPN Sawyer Smith to Mod Wagner 26 yards to tie thing at things at seven. They've since tacked on another and are up 14 seven on the Gators over on ESPN. Sean. All right Cassidy thank you. They're taking a look at Travis Etienne out of the game. At the moment, with Lynn J. Dixon, his very capable backup. In on second and goal from the one. Dixon driven back. Shy of the goal line. Andrew Armstrong, the senior linebacker out of Youngstown, Ohio, with the primary hit. Again, those linebackers coming downhill right at the line of scrimmage. Boom. Able to make that play. The center Pollard is occupied by the blitzing Williams. And it freed up Armstrong to make the clean hit short of the goal line. Dixon remains the running back. On third down and goal. Clemson leading 7-0. Lawrence walks in with the touchdown. Faked it to Lynn J. Dixon. And went around the left end for the second Clemson score of the night. It's 13-0. There it is again. You know, they're going to continue to remind teams, not just tonight, that Trevor Lawrence is a threat. I always bring up Andrew Luck because you think of Andrew Luck at Stanford throwing the ball. But there are many times, whether it's red zone or short yardage, they would they would run a zone read where they pull it and let him take off and run. And it, it really can be effective because everybody wants to pinch down and take away Travis Etienne or Lynn J. Dixon. So you got to be careful on the edge of the defense a collapsing down because when you do 16 is just going to read that he's going to feel it you overcommit he's going to walk around you and tiptoe into the end zone for, for touchdowns second rushing touchdown of the year for Lawrence who scored their first touchdown of the season They're against the George Tech squad came into Clemson and got hammered by the defending national champs, 52 to 14. Looks like Travis Etienne is all right. Chatting on the sideline with a smile on his face. If there's ever been an important answer in a football game early for an underdog, this, this would be it for Syracuse. Well, their last two games against Maryland and Clemson, those two teams have been in the red zone 10 times and scored 10 touchdowns. So the red zone defense is lacking. BT Potter's kickoff a touchback. We remind you that next week, Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo will be back in Austin as the Oklahoma State Cowboys ride into town to take on the Texas Longhorns at a Big 12 conference battle. That's Saturday, 7.30 on ABC, also streaming live on the ESPN app. You know about Sam Ellinger, but look out for Spencer Sanders in Oklahoma State. Tylon Ty Wallace on the outside, one of the top receivers in the country. Chuba Hubbard is an outstanding back. They can score. And if anything, you expect maybe a shootout next week. Tommy DeVito throws and a good catch. Hands catch made by Harris. Very close to a first down. He dropped one on the opening drive, but made it a catch there on a tougher chance. Yeah, good placement of the football, trusting his receiver Harris to make the play. And back to the run on second and a yard. And Abdul Adams, the transfer from Oklahoma, dropped in the backfield. 
Well, we, we've talked a lot about these Syracuse defense. Here's Isaiah Simmons. He's going to blitz up. Now, Simmons, this is new for him this year. They're playing him on the back end quite a bit. You'll see him at times over a slot receiver. They move him, Tanner Muse, and Kayvon Wallace around a lot. And the whole principle behind that is to try to confuse the quarterback with different looks, with these different roles that all three of these safeties can play. And Simmons started as a safety, then moved the linebacker, and now he's really a little bit of everything. On third and four, Tommy DeVito running for his life, has a man open far sideline, and a Syracuse first down, the catch and run by Tristan Jackson, a transfer from Michigan State. That's a heck of a job by DeVito because Brent Venables that time had five guys up close to the line of scrimmage, ended up only rushing two, and dropping nine, he's still able to find a hole in the zone. First first down of the game for Syracuse. DeVito in trouble and sack. Tripped up by the blitzing linebacker, James Skalski. Well, Brent Venables continues to dial up the edge pressure right here on the outside. Both Skalski, 47, and Kayvon, Kayvon Wallace. Skalski comes free. And again, they, they give you so many different looks that it affects the offensive line and the backs on who's picking up who and create that confusion. Vito forced to a deep drop. It's batted out of the air by K.J. Henry and incomplete. Uh, that looked like last year. Uh, they rushed three. And there wasn't a blitz there. Uh, not a lot of creativity. You know, what, what are they going to do this time? It's just K.J. Henry saying, I'm a better athlete. I'm going right by my guy. And that, that's a luxury that Clemson's had the last couple years with Christian Wilkins and Farrell and Austin Bryan and that, that group that they had, that's what that looked like. And if that starts to happen on a regular basis, that's a problem. Well, they lost four draft picks in the front four. Sean Riley to catch. Of course, they had three players taken in the first 17 picks of the NFL draft from their defensive line of last season. But people haven't heard about K.J. Henry, who's a redshirt freshman, who waited his turn, but he was an Under Armour All-American. He was the sixth-ranked player in the entire country yeah. at any position coming out of high school. So they just roll in four- and five-star recruits for the guys who leave. Yeah, it's incredible. And go back to Vic Beasley and think about the great defensive linemen that, that they've had since Dabo Sweeney has been here. And it's just an embarrassment of riches. Offrager on the punt again. Three minutes to go in the first quarter. Dominated by Clemson. And Syracuse will down it at the two-yard line. Cameron Jordan in the right spot. A 55-yard punt. Here's Maria Taylor. The first guys just want to update Travis Etienne. The trainers did check out his neck and shoulder and check the strength, but he said he was okay. In fact, he was ready to go in last series again. Now, Travis is a guy who, coming from Jennings, Louisiana, he's been someone that the entire community has gathered around. And as we continue to recognize teachers that go the extra yard, the teacher that he wanted to recognize was Carrie Klein. And that was his environmental science teacher. She said they created an entire Clemson Day just for him when the Tigers made it to the playoff because he represents players that make it out of their city and they're rallying behind him right now very likable young man Travis Etienne Tigers from their own three Etienne gets the call gets a half yard and that's about it extra yard for teachers week is an annual celebration led by the college football playoff foundation that honors great teachers across the country as Maria just mentioned to learn more about extra yard for teachers follow at CFP extra yard or search hashtag extra yard week on second and nine Justin Ross out of bounds at the nine yard line here comes third down and four. Lawrence, seven out of 11. Thrown for 97 yards here in the first quarter. Syracuse showing blitz. And they drop out of it. Crossing T. Higgins, first down and more. 
Out to the 18-yard line, ankle tackled by Trill Williams. I'm surprised they went zone there, and that shows the patience of Trevor Lawrence. Instead of trying to force something downfield, lets the play develop, waits for T. Higgins to come clear underneath, just checks it down to him and picks up the easy first down. Syracuse going man-to-man -man here. ETN. Boy, to the tackle behind the line of scrimmage and made his way to the 23-yard line. So he's back in there. The big problem for Clemson the last two years, their starting quarterback didn't make it to yeah. the second half when they arrived here two years ago as the number two team in the country. Kelly Bryant was the quarterback. He suffered a concussion in the first half. And Dabo Sweeney, Jeff Scott, told us on the phone the other day the backups just weren't really well prepared to play. Yeah. And then last year it was Lawrence who got hit. Along the sideline and knocked out of the game. Chase Bryce had to come in and play the second half. Incomplete pass intended for Joseph and Gata. There's what happened to yeah. Bryant when he got came in with an ankle injury. Then he, he was limping around before most of that game, before that injury. He goes out, they lose, and then last year, everybody's worst nightmare, Trevor Lawrence goes down. This is after Kelly Bryant had left the team, and they go to Chase uh, Bryce to come in to try to lead him to a victory. And Chase Bryce was the third string quarterback when the <laughs> week began. It was Bryant, Lawrence, and then Bryce, and then they decided Lawrence be the starter, so Bryant left. Lawrence pressured immediately, throws a deep ball, and the receiver shoved down Frank Ladson. Coverage from Christopher Frederick and no flag on the play. In that very similar area earlier in the game, Clemson ended up getting pass interference on a call that I don't think should have necessarily been pass interference. This time on third down, I think there could have been pass interference and a push that time by Frederick, but it's a no call. Ball's underthrown. Latson's trying to come back, and the defensive back definitely interfered with it. Live from our vantage point, it looked like more of a push than it did on the replay. Probably a good no call there. And Will Spires will punt with 43 seconds to go in the quarter. The Clemson coaches talked last year about when Bryce got in the game. He was shaky early, understandably so. Sean Riley, a fair catch. And it really made their play calling very conservative for a while. Here's Cassidy Hubbard in the studio. Thanks, Sean. Let's take a look at one of AT&T's best performances and Northwestern State giving number four LSU its best to start. Shelton Epler to Quan Shorts to put the Demons on top in Death Valley 73. This one on the SEC Network. Sean, hurry back to you. All right, Cassidy. LSU as a legitimate threat in the SEC. Yes. With Joe Burrow and the new offensive approach, they're always going to have athletes. I can't wait for you guys to see them in person and see the different way they're attacking as an offense. And I don't think they're going to take their foot off the accelerator. On first down, they come after Tommy DeVito, flushed by the blitzing linebacker Skalski in the pass incomplete for Tristan Jackson. This offensive line right now is overwhelmed. Not only are they depleted and moving and reshuffling to death, but the blitz schemes, the, the variety of ways that Brent Venables is dialing up pressures, the different looks, showing an odd look with three defensive linemen, and then bringing that fourth guy. Is it a nickelback? Is it a linebacker? Is it a corner? It's affecting the communication right now, and they're letting people in free. Here's Abdul Adams' tough run, and the crowd appreciates that. He got six. It'll set up third down and four. He had six and maybe about eight after contact. Really good effort. Final seconds of the opening quarter. And third down for Syracuse. Looked like Clemson was offside, so DeVito throws a deep ball. And it's incomplete. Intended for Taj Harris. Justin Maskell along the far end of the Clemson defensive line. Looked like he crossed into the neutral zone. Offside, defense number seven. Five-yard penalty results in the first down. By rule, we have one on time down. See Dabo Sweeney obviously frustrated with mass school because it's a first down. You know, third down, he's trying to get an early start, trying to get into that backfield. But you know, when it's third and four, that's the last thing you can do uh, if you're a defender, trying to get that early start and giving Syracuse five yards in the first down. 
Blitz the middle linebacker Skalski several times. Dabble Sweeney raved about Skalski, said he's really the guy who sets the tone for the defense this season. DeVito wants another deep ball, has a man breaking open, and it's dropped right through the hands of Tristan Jackson. It would have been a touchdown. You can't beat the number one team in a country in your own stadium when the crowd is a big part of it and have drops. That's the second big drop we've seen in this game. This one for a touchdown. Tommy DeVito can't make a better throw. Yeah, two fouls on the play, both by the offense. Illegal shift. Two men moving at the same time. That penalty is declined. An eligible player downfield. Offense. Tight end was covered up, went down for a pass. Five-yard penalty. We we'll still have another untimed down. Uh, this play wouldn't have mattered anyway because of the the penalties. But you can see right here, this this, this can't happen. When you're throwing the ball 55, 60 yards downfield, and it goes right through the hands of the Michigan State transfer Jackson. Sat out most of last year. He was eligible. To play in the Camping World Bowl game in Orlando. They went over West Virginia for their 10th win of the season. And that kind of a start to the year for Syracuse. Everything just a little bit off. DeVito, far sideline, caught for a first down. Luke Benson, who's not even on there too deep with his first catch of the year. And he was in bounds. That's the end of the first quarter here in Syracuse. Take a look at the Hall of Languages building, the original building on this campus, dating back to 1870, celebrating its sesquicentennial. Look out, DeVito on first and ten, looted a rush. And demonstrating what you said, the coaches told us, Herbie, that he's more than a thrower. He can run. He hasn't really shown that, but a nice scramble there for a positive play. Yeah, there's the athletic ability. Mike Jones looked like was going to get him from behind, blitzing linebacker, but steps up into that pocket, which is something they challenged him this week to do. And mix in the running back, Abdul Adams, taken down by Xavier Thomas. Very close to another Syracuse first down see, at the 20-yard line. And see, Sean, they, 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 such a big part of it, kind of being an equalizer, is this tempo and picking up first downs. Levito, 6'2", 212-pounder, lunged ahead for the first down. That's one of the things that the offense coordinator Mike Lynch told us. He doesn't feel like they've gone right. fast enough. And he said part of the problem is you got to get the first first down. It's <laughs> right. hard to get tempo if you don't get a first down. And last week got away from them in a hurry uh, against Maryland. But the, and you see teams that, that uh, go up against really talented defenses doing this. And a big part of that is to try to tire them out, try to confuse them, try to get them on their heels. From the 18, Clemson crowding the line of scrimmage. And Adams ahead for about three. Dino Babers and Mike Lynch collaborate on the play calls. And as you might imagine, when they're trying to go fast, there isn't a lot of signaling. The plays are pretty simple. It's not a very deep playbook. Yeah. Dino Babers, who spent a lot of time at Baylor with Art Bryles, bought, brought that system here to Syracuse. And that's what they, they try to run, a very similar system. Abdul Adams. Surge ahead to the 11-yard line. It'll set up third down and three. Logan Rudolph made the tackle. And a nice block there by the right guard who's pulling around that time. At Davis does a nice job of fitting through there. Elmore, the tight end, also fitting through that hole. Feels different. Mo Neal is an experienced guy, a four-year guy. Abdul Adams comes over from Oklahoma as a transfer. More powerful. You can feel that when he gets in between the tackles. He's running through those arm tackles. Well, interesting. They said they wanted to go faster, but apparently they're having a hard time getting the play in here. And now Dino Babers is going to ask for a timeout, it seems, as he walks down the sideline. You know, a big play upcoming for Syracuse. Third down and three. The Orange down 14. Coming up for the Orange, third down and three. Down 14 to nothing. 
you wonder, Sean, if this could be four down territory, down 14, big underdog, got to take advantage of this drive and try to come away with a touchdown. Nine defenders up tight in the box, man to man on the perimeter. They got the look, now it's about execution. And they changed the formation after looking at the sideline. DeVito lobs it up, one on one coverage, and the pass incomplete intended for Taj Harris with Mario Goodrich in coverage for Clemson. Well, that's the matchup that they wanted. The reason you saw him look over, he went from being back in a shotgun, gets underneath, he wants this matchup. He wants to go against Goodrich, try to beat him. He's the third corner. He's got Harris who can make plays. Ball is underthrown. See Goodrich with his eyes on the football. Good no call there by the official. And as usual, Clemson playing a lot of players. Goodrich is a backup. There's Andre Schmidt. Won the Luke Rose Award as the best place kicker in the country last year. 29-yard field goal. He on South Cross Avenue, which dates back to 1926. You would love it. Fantastic pizza. Really? Buffalo wings, but you saw the banners. Yeah. And I saw one if upside they down. Win the game, win? They turn the banner Maryland upside we'll just down. Keep there for now. Uh, <laughs> Maryland turned Syracuse upside down last week. <laughs> But uh, the big win over Liberty yeah, resulted yeah. in the banner being flipped over. So the pizza's not bad, huh? Pizza's terrific. I'm here in post game. That may happen. We stopped in there today. As a matter of fact, didn't eat as quite crowded as you might expect on game day. Here's Joseph and Gata bringing back Sterling Hawkwater's kickoff and the freshmen's across the 25. Let's go to Maria Taylor. Hey, Sean, so the spirit of family is up here for Syracuse, and I have Adam Weitzman here, and the decision that he made to raise money for Eric Dungy's father, who was diagnosed with liver and kidney cancer, by selling out his suite uh, is an incredible one. And Eric, I want to start with you. With what did it mean to you to know that you had the support of Syracuse alumni around you and your father? You know, Adam's a great friend, and I'm just so thankful for him and everything, and every donor here is just an incredible experience and it's overwhelming honestly I mean I brought it up to him and two minutes later he all right I'm gonna make a call and then he got all this set up so it's just speaks volumes of him speaks volumes of character and it's just my family are, are forever grateful for him I know you put a post on LinkedIn you posted it everywhere on social media you wanted to sell out all 24 seats and you managed to do it what made you want to make sure that you could get money for medical bills for Tim Dungy well usually I just invite like family and friends but I thought we could do something for a good cause to help out his dad and I just put it on social media and we sold out all the tickets pretty quick and you know we raised a little over thirty six thousand dollars so it's pretty good and you know hope his, his dad's gonna be a fighter like he is so we're praying for his you know recovery. I know dad's gonna be a fighter but I have to have you put on your coach's hat really quick. Yeah. Now you played quarterback in games like this. What's important for Tommy DeVito in this offense against Clemson? Yeah I mean it's just important. I mean I think he's doing a great job right now. He's the play action's really working for him. I mean it's hard for me to sit up here and not want to go on the field but I think they're doing a great job. The line's looking good and as long as they get that running game going it's gonna open up a lot for the passing game. All right, well incredible story here of what it means to go to Syracuse and alumni supporting other players and back to you and Sean McDonough I know you understand exactly what it means to see something like this happening with your family. Yeah I sure do. I'm very uh, fortunate to consider both of them friends. Adam Weitzman is legendary in this part of the world for his charitable endeavors and goodness. Very close friend of Coach Beheim was here tonight. Deep throw. There was a pass interference call on Syracuse's Antoine Cordy while Maria was chatting with Eric and Adam. That pass incomplete and it's Cordy in coverage on Frank Ladson. Yeah, great to hear that story and, and great to see people helping each other in this community. I also want to say that you imagine being Dungey, a four-year starter. It's the first really big game that he's had to sit up there and have a popcorn and a hot dog. That's tough and what for him to do. Well, he was as tough as they come. Loved his style. Yeah, he'd get knocked around, get back up, and continue fighting. Third down and eight. Lawrence deep and over the head of Justin Ross. So they recover from that pass interference, come back, and Clemson taking some shots on this series, trying to push the ball down the field and unable to, to be able to come up with those plays, and Syracuse steps up there on third down, gets Clemson's offense off the field. They congratulate Trill Williams. 
for his part in that coverage. After he got on a pretty good roll, Lawrence has thrown four straight incomplete passes now, and here's Will Spires for the third time to punt. John Riley, fair catch on the run at the 25. Fans like the Syracuse students. Taco Bell awarding the Live Ma Student Section of the Year. Syracuse Student Section already on the national watch list. Now called the Ozone at Syracuse Student Section. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell. See how your school can compete. Or get the committee's attention by using the hashtag Live Ma Student Section Contest. DeVito wrestled down by Tanner Muse, the blitzing safety, the third sack already for the Clemson Tigers. Tanner Muse is right here. Again, he, he, he's typically in the back end, but this is an adjustment that's new for this defense. How do we get after the quarterback by creating confusion? That could be Isaiah Simmons. That could be Kayvon Wallace. It could be Tanner Muse. And when you use different bodies, it affects who you're IDing and who to protect against blitzes. When we talked with Dino Babers. He said that was the number one thing when Syracuse was on offense. 11, 12, and 19. Here's another blitz. It's the middle linebacker, Skalski, again. And four sacks for Clemson against this beleaguered Syracuse offensive line. It's great to see Skalski back. He comes from here. Chad Smith comes from the outside. This offensive line, they're starting to guess where that pressure might come from. The center service moves to his left. Nobody to the right to pick up that blitzing, blitzing middle linebacker. So back to back sacks. Since 2014, Clemson has more sacks than any team in the country. DeVito, short throw, hoping for a lot of run after the catch by Aaron Hackett, and he doesn't get it. A quick three and out. Brent Venables fired up about the play of the defense. Boy, Brent Venables, the best in the business as a defensive coordinator, dialing up pressures, relentless with his approach and getting his scheme ready. It changes every single week depending on the offense that he's facing and what the goals are that week to attack protection. Here's Sterling Hoffrichter to punt for the fourth time. One of six Syracuse players has already earned his undergraduate degree. Fair catch made by Darian Kendrick. 53-yard punt. Monday, the 50th season of Monday Night Football continues with a rematch of the very first Monday Night Football game. The Cleveland Browns taking on the New York Jets. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6 Eastern, and then it's the Browns and the Jets also on the ESPN app. You think, of course, of the Browns. You think of Jim Brown, one of the great running backs of all time. Part of a great history of running backs here at Syracuse. Three times the NFL MVP. You see that number 44, and that's who you think of, Jim Brown. And he made that the number to wear here at Syracuse. For many years, they used that in recruiting. Ball start. Offense number 59. Five-yard penalty. What's down? Number 44 retired. Gage Cervenka called for the false start. Speaking of retired numbers at halftime, they're going to retire the number of Tim Green. Great defensive lineman here at Syracuse in the early 80s for the late great Hall of Fame coach Dick McPherson. Tim, as many of you know, has been battling ALS. All-time sack leader at Syracuse. It'll be a very emotional halftime ceremony inside the dome. Lawrence on the run. And on target, T. Higgins again to the 37-yard line. Nice early down movement, moving the pocket with those middle linebackers blitzing as much as they are. One of the answers for Clemson, a levels route. We have a deep, a mid-range, and a short route. And moving Trevor Lawrence outside of that pocket. It's like T. Higgins at the bottom, even up after he came up from, from the play, ended up going back down. Christopher yeah. Frederick came down on top of him after the tack on top of him as he tackled him. Junior from Oak Ridge, Tennessee, has emerged as one of the best wide receivers in the country. Premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Number one, Clemson. Believe for its 18th straight win, leading 14 to three in the second quarter. 
And on second and three, it's a short completion to Justin Ross, who got spun down very near the line to gain. They're going to mark him just short. It'll be third down and a half a yard. Alan Stritzinger made the tackle. Well, you know, Cuse on third and short will be blitzing those linebackers, trying to be able to win the battle at the line of scrimmage and get penetration. Lynn Jay Dixon, the running back. He gets the call, gets tripped up. And from where the official's running in from the far sideline, it looks like he got the line of scrimmage, and that's all. So to be fourth down and less than a yard. How about the effort of Kendall Coleman being able to come all the way from his defensive end spot, 55, coming down, getting inside that block, and his left arm prevents Dixon from getting that first down. Talk about an effort. We think of Coleman... We think of a pass rush guy, right? He's the leader, the motor of this defense, and on third and short, he makes the play. And they force a punt. For the review. Apparently, they're looking to analyze the spot. See if maybe Clemson had picked up the first down, didn't get a good spot. Yeah, and I, I wondered if that might have been Dabo Sweeney asking them to take a, a look, but I don't think it was. I think that came from upstairs just to be able to confirm and look at the spot to see if he, the ball is able to extend across the line. I, he looks well short to me. I think the spot looks pretty good based on that look anyway. These are always dicey. I don't know. How do you... It's... Well, he needed the 40-yard line. It didn't look like he got it from that angle either. Elbowed down with the ball, tucked in his arm. I think the, the previous angle might be the best angle we have. You mentioned the elbow. When the elbow goes down, where's the ball? I think it's maybe, maybe six, eight inches that they might pick up based on that look. But to me, this was not what replay was designed to do. No. So it's designed to correct obvious mistakes. Right. Yeah, you, when you start stopping plays for <laughs> six and eight You can do this on every or, play. Yeah. And I know it's the difference between a first down or a fourth down and a likely punt. After further review, the ruling that the runner was short of the line of the game stands. Although it gives Dabo Sweeney more time to think about what he wants to do. It is kind of the field position and certainly the yardage. If you had a fake in your bag, you the might way, run it. Sean, the way this game started and the way the Syracuse defense has kind of settled in, 14-3. to three, Their defense continues to do the job of getting that high-powered Clemson offense off the field. Syracuse alert for a fake there. High but short punt by Spires and... Sean Riley, the fair catch. 38-yard punt next week. Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo. Be back in Austin as the Oklahoma State Cowboys ride into town to take on the Longhorns. That's next Saturday, 7.30 on ABC. Also streaming live on the app. You'll be back with your regular partner, Chris Fowler. Just want to personally thank him for agreeing to switch places with me today and work with our great crew, Todd Blackledge and Holly Rose, so that I could be here uh, with our family this weekend on this yeah. uh, special occasion. Chris yeah. didn't have to agree to do it, but he did. I know he missed being with you, but I yeah. know he had fun with our... Yeah, he had a great game, too. Yeah. With your crew. State. DeVito under duress and sacked again. He just has nowhere to go. They are... Absolutely running over this Syracuse offensive line. Remember Xavier we talk, Thomas leading the way. And we talked about blitzes, where they're coming from. Look, at, look, imagine being an offensive lineman and a quarterback trying to set protection. You have no idea to snap of the ball where they're coming from. Mo Neal on the delay. Tripped up by Justin Maskell. They got the sack yardage back and then somehow to the 28-yard line. 
You know, and, and Syracuse knew coming in, it's, it's an obvious problem when you face Brent Venables. So the answer for Dino Babers is you got to get the ball out quick or you got to move the pocket. Because right. if you sit back there, you're in no man's land. He doesn't even have time to get it out quickly. I mean, they're on him so quickly. Look at this. I mean, they're on him so quickly, you can't even throw a quick pass. He threw that one up for grabs. In the general direction of Mo Neal with A.J. Terrell in coverage. They're showing pressure here, and then it ends up coming here. So they're calling protection to help to the left, and then the blitz comes from the right, and they're free. So, again, credit Brent Venables in the scheme. They almost come up with the interception, just throwing it up. You know, the Clemson coaches love the back four. They're veterans, six starters of the front seven lost after last season's national championship and they think they have a talented group playing well Darian Kendrick the fair catch of a 51 yard Hoff Richter punt well let's bring in the bear uh, I always enjoy this now I get to participate in the <laughs> Aflac trivia question with the bear I'm He's sure very the bear is somewhere air conditioned very not under the bear. steamy roof yeah. of the dome are you actually inside the building bear or where are you hiding I, I, I'm in the truck with your uh, your Syracuse alum Bill Benell here Our it's great that's producer. a question of course the orange looking to beat a, a top two Clemson team for the second time in three years which school has the most wins over top two opponents as an unranked team for the second time in three years Syracuse you win as an unranked team over top two teams Sean, welcome, have, welcome yeah, aboard. Yeah. That's no your idea. answer. It's your big weekend. It's, yeah. your, it's your turn. Well, it's homecoming. I'll just blurt out Syracuse. I know <laughs> it's not, not the case. What is it? I, I bet, do we have to start with a tough one? Well, it, it's a tough one, but it's a, it's it's a, it's a good time, timely one, I think. But yeah, tonight answer to the uh, athletic trivia question tonight. Purdue. Purdue has eight, including that win over Ohio State last year in October. That great game. The Bear. Now I know you have not been here. Except the play. You yeah, that's right. the only time. Here Bear's the probably been here for hoops, I would guess. I don't know if he has. Lawrence throws, and the catch made by T. Higgins, and he might be off to the races. Lakeem Williams trying to track him down, and he gets some help from Trill Williams, but it's a huge gain inside the Syracuse 10. They'll mark him down at the 9. Good for 56 yards for Clemson. Great matchup one-on-one -on -one with Melifonwu. Who's going to win that? The back shoulder adjustment back by T Higgins and the size that's the matchup you love to see 6-4 receiver against a 6-3 corner but the placement of the football and the adjustment back by T Higgins Personal foul. face mask offense number five 15 yard for the five is on the play via first down Trill Williams injured on the play T. Higgins trying to use a stiff arm, gets his hand locked into the face mask of Williams, the linebacker, chasing him down. That's what was called, costing 15 yards. Good placement of that football by Trevor Lawrence, who knew that his receiver, it's something you practice, sometimes depending on the placement of that corner, where he is, if he's in phase, or if, he, if you have a step or two on him, you're going to throw it downfield. But in that case, the corner was in phase. You're going to throw it back, and that is a tough adjustment back when you're running full speed for a defensive back. Well, a big play. You mentioned the Syracuse defense had gotten better. Certainly improved over last week at Maryland. The Terrapins scored touchdowns on seven of their first eight possessions. They had 42 points at the half. Then Maryland had just two at the half today in the loss at Temple. Was 15 in the game. ETN on first and 10 from the 23 goes nowhere. They've kind of gotten away from him the last few possessions. They, they've been throwing the football and, and looking for that big play. And, and I think what makes this offense so tough to stop is when they get ETN going between the tackles and then they can still get those safeties worried about that running game and then they can get the ball downfield. The last two or three possessions, it's really been more about the passing game. It's usually a good idea to give it to Etienne. He's averaged better than eight yards per carry for his career. Lawrence to the back of the end zone. One-handed catch made by Ngata, but he's out of bounds. They're, they're very high on Ngata, a true freshman. They say he could be the next great one. Tight coverage by Frederick. 
Good job of kind of walling him off, forcing him into the boundary. Lawrence really didn't have anywhere to go with the football, but gives you an idea with the hands of Engada what he can do, even though he's out of bounds. Yeah, he looks just like Higgins and Ross, another guy that's 6'3", 215 pounds. Third down, Syracuse rushes only three. Lawrence, plenty of time, sets and fires over the head of T. Higgins, so good coverage. And now a flag down at the end of the play. And the linebacker dropping in coverage, trying to chase after Lawrence, hits him high after the throw. What's well, Lakeem Williams, who's been feisty is, earlier in the half with some stuff. This is nasty, Sean. Boom. I think he may have had some offensive linemen downfield as well. There's no foul for roughing the pass. How about that? And that was a play downfield. Yeah. Offense. That pill is declined. Okay. And John Simpson got downfield. I thought they might get him because he, he wasn't necessarily it was late, it was high. And anytime it's even close to being high on a quarterback who's defenseless, the official will call it. But instead, they wave that off and they go with the offensive lineman downfield. So, again, the Q's defense holds steady. Yeah, a big face mask penalty against T. Higgins on the end of his long catch and run. So... It'll lead to a field goal try for B.T. Potter, the sophomore out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. First year is their starting field goal kicker. Two out of three this year. Three out of four for his career from 40 yards with a big leg and plenty of room to spare. Jonathan Vilma. They'll have scores and highlights from a busy week three of college football. I know one of the things you and I were talking about, we mentioned the Pitt-Penn State game earlier. Pittsburgh down by seven, under five minutes to go. Yeah. One timeout left, fourth and goal from the one, attempts a field goal. And they hadn't been really moving the ball very well. They finally got deep, I mean, deep in Penn State territory. You may not get down there again. I was shocked they kicked the field goal. I was too, and they missed it. The chip shot field goal that they missed. So an interesting start to this game. Kirk in the sense that a couple of times it looked like Clemson right really deliver almost a knockout blow here in the first half but somehow Syracuse is hanging in there just close enough and, and as broadcasters and especially your big weekend here we, we like to see competitive games right yes it was 14 nothing in the first quarter and we're thinking all right we're going to talk about your great weekend you had <laughs> some of the things we might get into but after that Syracuse has settled in they, they're making some plays defensively it, you know they were confident I think that their offense could have a chance to make plays be the aggressor now we've not seen that yet because Venables has done a good job of dialing up and confusing this Clemson or this Syracuse offense but see if they can do anything here before the half can they protect Tommy DeVito? No. Skalski, the linebacker, on the blitz again. And this almost looks like an instant replay over and over and over again. The Syracuse quarterback running for his life. You got a backup right tackle in the game because of some injuries. Ryan Alexander. Veterello, the starting right tackle, is over at the left tackle spot. And the left tackle is the center playing for Sam Heckel. So it's hard on a really good offensive line, let alone that. And they can smell blood. Clemson, they're just coming after relentlessly. DeVito stayed alive, and now it's Mo Neal up the near sideline and down at the Clemson 25. Well, that's what you have to do. You've got to make them pay for the pressure. They brought the blitz. Spectre on the outside to your left. Ten. Nobody's in the flat. DeVito, the athletic ability, Sean, to keep the play alive. He just happened to check out his check down at the last second before he took off. And Mo Neal picks up huge yards after the catch. 50 yards. They come right back with the pressure. It's Mo Neal with a lot of running room. Banged out of bounds by Tanner Mew inside the 10 first and goal orange well, again if you're gonna bring the blitzes these are good answers look at the outside pressure nobody's left out there so you, you get the ball out you get the ball out quickly into a playmaker and back-to-back -back plays Mo Neal gets some positive yards he gets a breather Abdul Adams is in for him and 
with three and a half to go in the half a flag. It's going to be a timeout first. For Clemson. Clemson had 12 guys on the field. Out first inside the dome for football since 1998. Brought back to life. Couple of big plays back to back in the passing game. DeVito to Mo Neal. First six possessions of the game for Syracuse. They had a total of 62 yards of offense. They've had 67 on this drive, and they're inside the 10 trying to make it a one-score game. You're going to get man-to-man -man with your wide receivers locked up against the corners of Clemson. You're either going to try to hit the receivers, make them win on the outside with slants or a fade, or maybe a speed option to get the ball out of the hands of the quarterback quickly. Tough to run in the middle. Abdul Adams, the running back. DeVito continues to retreat and throws it away over the head of Christian Jackson. That's a habit that he's had that Mike Lynch told us they're trying to break him with. When he gets pressured, he tends to retreat even deeper, and they'd rather see him, if he can, step up into the pocket. And we saw him do a, a better job of that earlier in his first half last week. After Marcus Woods. Clock is running, the play clock's running, so he's going to use the timeout. Crowd chanting Dino Dino, enormously popular here in Syracuse after he led them to a 10 win season last year. You think he waited his turn? He was an assistant at 12 different schools over 28 years before he got his first head coaching job at Eastern Illinois. Had two winning seasons there. Inherited Jimmy Garoppolo. That's a pretty yeah. nice deal. Yeah. Then went to Bowling Green. Won the MAC there. Now in his fourth year in Syracuse has really brought back this program. He said at his opening press conference, close your eyes. Maybe you can't envision it right now. But the day's coming when the dome will be filled. And there'll be tremendous excitement and anticipation. And boy, was he right, because it's filled the night, and there was a great anticipation for this game here locally. Well, there, there was a day when, when Syracuse had guys like Donovan McNabb and, and others. Right? They, they were a top 10, top 15 program year in and year out. Take, a, take another look at this just to see that the, the 12th man here trying to get off the field right as the ball is snapped. He appears to be right at the line. But you could see the confusion. Look, look at, look at uh, Denzel Johnson here, confused, trying to get over to try to get in on the play with Sean Riley, and that's exactly who DeVito ends up throwing the football to. So they are talking to Bruce Palmer, the replay official, this ACC crew. First conference game of the season for Syracuse. Of course, Clemson opened with a win against Georgia Tech, already 1-0 in the conference. Let's bring in our rules expert, Dave Kataya. Looking at this, the rule is 12 in a formation. The defense, as long as that player gets to that line before After further snapped, review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. There were not 12 men on the field. My rule, Syracuse is charged for timeout. And I, I agree with that because when that ball snapped, his foot's on that sideline. That is reviewable, and I agree with the confirmation. He is off the field. So Dino Babers, twice now, they put together a good drive deep into Clemson territory. Only have to settle again for another field goal. So here's Andre Schmidt. One for one from 29 yards. This will be 23. Nolan Cooney out of East Greenwich, Rhode Island, is the holder. And the operation results in three more points. Exactly two minutes to go till halftime. And it's 17 to 6. Clemson aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. The best part of every kickoff is the drive that comes next. Go further with Goodyear. More driven. Now Syracuse deferred. They won the toss and deferred. They played defense. They're going to get the ball to start the second half. They played a heck of a game to be in this game right now, 17-6. 17-6 for Dino Babers sounds a lot better going into the locker room than 
to six. Right. Big drive here for the both teams, but for the Syracuse defense to try to stay in this game and continue to believe that they can compete and try to win this this uh, game in the second half. Job one doing a better job of picking up the pressures, protecting Tommy DeVito better. Clemson has outgained Syracuse 241 to 132. Five sacks already for Clemson in the first half. Probably could have had a few more. Mm -hmm. Sterling Hoffrichter will kick off. Then Joseph Ngata, the true freshman of Folsom, California, back deep for Clemson. And it's a touchback. So plenty of time for Trevor Lawrence with all the great weapons at his disposal and Clemson does have two timeouts remaining. Some have wondered Kirk about his start to the season. You know, he came into the season with a long streak without throwing an interception. It went to 182 passes in a row before he threw one against Georgia Tech. And now he's thrown three interceptions coming into tonight in 45 passes. How do you think he's played so far this year? I think he's played okay. You know, I, I think he's obviously capable of playing a lot better, but I don't think it's been a bad start to the season. He wants to go deep, jump ball, and good coverage by Melifonwu. But it, uh, we, I keep talking about this matchup. I love it because of the size. Did he end up getting his hand on that football? I mean, he's step for step in phase. See that? I, 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 boy, I can't tell if he if he just lost sight of the ball. No, no, he didn't touch it. Ross had a chance to get his eyes and head turned around and just unable to hold on to it. Ross had a couple of drops last week. You know, we talked about the performance of Lawrence and the coaches. So there were three drops in the game against Texas A&M. Syracuse blitzes. Lawrence out for Ross quickly. And he swung across the boundary by Antoine Cordy. Ross had such a monster year that was highlighted by the play in the national championship on that big stage where he just took the game over in the second half. At both playoff games, he was immense. Six for 148, two touchdowns in the semifinal against Notre Dame. Six for 153 in a score against Alabama. Three touchdowns of 40 or more in the two games. Pressure, Lawrence over the middle and incomplete. Off the hands of Justin Ross with Andre Sisco, the sophomore, who's had nine career interceptions already, just three games into his sophomore year. Yeah, he does a really good job of feeling this, anticipating the throw, just a playmaker, playing center field, reading the eyes, and on third and short, expecting that ball to be thrown and jumped it, is able to dislodge the football. Seven interceptions last year for Cisco. He led the nation as a true freshman. First player to do that since George Shaw back in 1951 for Oregon. Spires punt. Fair catch. 25-yard line by Sean Riley. 44-yard punt. Next Saturday, ESPN's college game day built by the Home Depot. You know where you're going, don't you? Yeah. You yeah. decide where you're going. We have no. power at our company. No, no, no. You don't. No, I just, the, the bosses make the I'm a pack mule. I just go where I'm told. Uh, well, you're going to Athens, Georgia, as you know, in advance of the uh, big showdown between Notre Dame and Georgia Ooh. next weekend. That'll be exciting. And then I'll fly to Austin for the game. You've been promoting Oklahoma State in Texas. That's a fun weekend. And a big game, one of the most anticipated non-conference games, obviously, of the season. Tommy DeVito giving a little bit of a pocket, but ran out of time, and he's yanked down by the true freshman, Tyler Davis. And we've seen so much pressure. This time, it's coverage that created that sack. Instead of them getting in right away, Davis needed a little bit of help, and the coverage downfield gave him that. I think an indication of how Dabo Sweeney feels his defense is dominating that offensive line. He uses a timeout here with 1.28 to go, wanting the ball back. He has just one timeout left, and 
Syracuse only won. Of course, they lost one on that challenge a moment ago. That does show you the confidence that he has in, in thinking that they could make the moves. We've talked about the movement. Heckle moving him out of the lineup with his injury. You can see how the left tackle moves to the center. The right tackle moves over to the left tackle, and the backup right tackle, Alexander, steps in. So. Right. And Venerello, the left tackle, is just a freshman. They think he's going to be terrific, but he's learning as he goes. He's a redshirt freshman. And yeah. Ryan Alexander is a grad transfer from South Alabama. He was a starter there, but he arrived here in the summer and is really still learning what Syracuse does offensively. I'm trying to do it against one of the great defenses in the country. Abdul Adams with some running room. And a first down for Syracuse across the 35-yard line. There is a flag down on the play. And those are receiver downfield. Offense number 82 is covered. Five-yard penalty, second down. That was a key call in last year's Clemson Syracuse game looked like Syracuse had converted late in the game on a huge play got called back for lineman downfield. And that, that play changes your mindset if you're if you're Dino Babers. Always big chance some good yards some momentum tempo trying to get downfield into field goal range whereas now you're just trying to work that clock. With one minute to go. Syracuse already 65 penalty yards. Thinking about playing it deep. Instead, they check it down. Catch is made by Abdul Adams, and uh, Clemson will use that last time out with 46 seconds to go. Chad Smith made the tackle, and Dabo Sweeney raved about him when we visited the other day. A graduate student getting his first opportunity to start this season. And Coach Sweeney thinks he's done an excellent job. Think about that in the era that we live in with players, seems like a lot of them in a high profile teams leaving after three years or getting frustrated if they're not starting and transferring into the transfer portal. Here's a guy like Chad Smith who's working, as you said, in his fifth year. He's kind of had to wait his time behind some very talented linebackers and has had some spot duty in the past, but now takes over. James Skowski, to me, it, it, with Kendall Joseph moving on and, and graduating, they needed an anchor. As much as you talk about the defensive line, if you really know this defense, Kendall Joseph was the glue and a big part of the communication. James Skowski, who was a great player, sat out last year with an injury, comes in into that role and now becomes the guy that has to make sure everybody's kind of the extension of Brent Venables out to the defense. I like when you asked Dino Babers yesterday about this defensive front for Clemson. He said, well, if you're asking me if I'd rather face that bunch from last year, no, they're all those first-round picks. But it's not that this bunch has some serious drop-off. Abdul Adams taken down by Jordan Williams and Xavier Thomas. No timeout here for Clemson. And it looks like the uh, half will end without them having to punt. 26 on the game clock and 27 at that same time on the play clock. So Clemson out gained Syracuse 248 to 136 in the first half. Lawrence 13 to 25 for 198 and a touchdown. And as much as it felt like Clemson dominated the half, Syracuse still in the game. They'll get the second half kickoff. That's the end of the first half here in Syracuse. 17-6 Clemson, the halftime report with Kevin State. Stay in New York State. Tim was recruited by everybody. And because he decided to stay home, a lot of very good players followed him here that helped Coach McPherson build this into one of the top programs in the country. And with more on that, here's Maria Taylor. That's right, Sean. I have the son of Tim Green, Troy, and you just read your father's words, and he said that this opportunity fulfills a lifetime of dreams. So describe what he feels about this moment, having his jersey retired. Uh, he's just incredibly honored. I mean, it's been a, a lifetime for him. He lived here. He went to school here. He played in the pros. He came back here. So, you know, this is really uh, who he is, and the Carrier Dome's a part of him. So it's really special. Now, 10 months ago, he made public that he was battling ALS. How has he 
handled that battle. He hasn't uh, slowed down much. I mean, he's a real warrior. He, uh, he's trying to lead the charge and, and help people, everybody with ALS, not just himself. And so it's really been, uh, I mean, it's, it's admirable just to see as a son or just anybody on the outside. It's been great. I know you guys as a family, you created a foundation, Tackle ALS. What is the work that you guys are doing to attack this disease? So at Tackle ALS, 100% uh, of the donations go towards uh, ALS research. Uh, there's no admin fees or anything like that. It's all going to new cutting edge treatments for people with ALS, regardless of how long they've had it. And uh, it's inclusive to everybody. It's not uh, expensive, so everybody can get in. And uh, just this week, we broke $3.2 million, so it's really exciting. Well, congratulations. A proud son and obviously the proud Orange Nation here for Tim Green, a round ovation the entire time that he was down there. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye, buddy. Well said, Maria. Proud son. I know Tim's very proud of the job that Troy did reading those beautiful words from his dad. And we listed the accomplishments. Yeah, it's mind-boggling. Oh, yeah. Good Tim Green is, at, you know, everything that he does. There's a run. Is it a first down from O'Neill? And just a wonderful human being. You know, it just breaks your heart to see him and his family having to deal with this. But uh, like everything that he's ever done, Tim doing it with a lot of grace and class and courage. That's what I've, I've witnessed and really enjoyed watching that at halftime. Watched the entire ceremony, and you could see. The outpouring of love from his family and his friends. So very, very touching, touching moment tonight. And very well deserved. Syracuse on offense here to start the half. Sean Riley the catch near sideline. So after the first down, they get five. And Riley looks like he's a little bit, came up a little bit uh, ginger on that, on that leg. Syracuse trying to get into that attack mode they talked to us about this week. O'Neal bounces off the hit, gets two. Yeah, that was about as fast as they've snapped the ball tonight on offense. O'Neal's had a couple good carries here to start this second half. Those five Packers and Wall Kayvon Wallace attacking him, and it's third and manageable again for DeVito here. Trying to slow down the rush. Look out! DeVito spins away from Chad Smith, but stumbles down. They brought both the linebackers, Smith and Skalski, which they've done all night, right here and right here. You can see they continue to come free off the edge. You have only, when you're empty, you have five offensive linemen, and they're only bringing five, but because of the confusion they're creating, this offensive line, it seems like almost every third down, is sliding the wrong direction from where the blitz ends up coming from. Mari Rogers back for this punt. Sterling Hoffrichter, and that is a bomb, driving Rodgers back inside the 10. And Syracuse there in coverage as well. well. Trevor Lawrence started fast, 8 of 14, 106 yards, just in the first quarter. He had two touchdowns, it looked like, boy, here goes Clemson. And then a little bit of a struggle. Clemson got aggressive, started to make plays. The Tigers, for their last five possessions, have punted the football. They start with a toss to Travis Etienne. Burst of speed, but a good tackle by Lakeem Williams to keep Etienne under control. He got to the 14, and it'll be second down and three. See, Sean, I think that's where they go back to. They got away from Etienne in the latter part of the first half. I think you get back to running the football and being patient, and then, then take your shots downfield. Ten carries now for 47 yards for Etienne. They... Have the same play in the other direction. Shaky tackling, so ETN keeps on powering. Out to the 22 for another Clemson first down. He just bounced off of Cisco to safety, who's had a pretty good first half. Came up and run support. You got a feel for how physical Travis ETN can be. Lawrence. Far sideline, up for grabs and intercepted by Christopher Frederick. Still on his feet, inside the 10 and out of bounds. Intended for T. Higgins, but it wound up in the arms of Frederick, the fifth-year senior from Georgia who has his sixth career 
INT. Sean, this is great film study and preparation, anticipating this back shoulder throw. Gets a hand on the ball, it goes up in the air, and then he's able to locate it and make the interception. But the play was him anticipating this ball being thrown back instead of downfield. He's, we've seen that throw in the first half. That is a big time play by the senior and three year starter. That's where the experience comes into play for the corner. And Trevor Lawrence, who threw four interceptions all of last season in 15 games, as compared to 30 touchdown passes, has thrown four interceptions already this year. The veteran Frederick, his 34th career start, has them inside the 10. DeVito needs to throw it away, and he throws it to the other team. Mario Goodrich takes it back for Clemson. A huge mistake by Tommy DeVito. DeVito's athletic ability keeps the play alive, but I don't have any idea what he's thinking. He's outside the pocket, throw the ball away. He loses sight of a receiver. There's just nobody there. A mental collapse by the quarterback, who's for the most part played smart tonight. There, that, that ball never had a chance of getting to Adams. There were two different Clemson defenders. He should have just thrown that up into the stands. A critical mistake. They're ruling on the field interception. I guess they're trying to make sure that Goodrich was in bounds, but he's clearly in bounds. Although I think what they're saying is he stepped out of bounds yeah. after the interception. So it'll be an interception, but the ball's going to come back inside the five yard line. How about the athletic ability by Goodrich? He falls. Ball's in the air while he's on the ground. And then he comes up. It looks like he's actually going to go back to the four yard yeah. line. He, but he was on the ground. And the ball is flying through the air, and then he's able to come up. You see, he took a shot by Adams, and then just gets up. But still, no excuse for Tommy DeVito. I know he's a first-year starter, but he's got to get outside of the pocket on first and 10, especially early. Throw it away. First career interception for Mario Goodrich, sophomore from Kansas Rudy City, Missouri. It's confirmed. First down, Clipson. That's on me, says Tommy DeVito, and he's absolutely right. You just cannot make that play, especially the crowd alive. At the very least, even if you kick a field goal. Well, how about the opportunity? You're, you're at the nine-yard line. Mm -hmm. Your defense just made maybe the play of the game to get you back in it, and the very next play, you throw an interception. You've got to shake that one off. So back-to-back -back turnovers. The crowd is still engaged. Lawrence. Bounced off a hit. Andre Cisco and got tackled by Kingsley Jonathan. Hey, Cisco, sophomore, is known for his interceptions. He had seven last year, already two this year. Man, he comes up. He's a physical safety for a smaller defensive back. They would like him to be a better tackler. Yeah. So that time he went for the hit but didn't wrap anybody up. And there was a couple of extra yards. ETN. Stop just shy of the first down. Here's a third down and one. Under ten and a half to go in the third quarter. An exchange of turnovers here early in the third. 50,248 inside the dome tonight. The third largest crowd ever in this building in the first sellout since 1998. And they are loud, and it's quite warm in the dome. Ramari Rogers breaks the tackle and gets the first down and much more. He may go. Ramari Rogers. Touchdown, Clemson. What a turn of events. 87 yards. The last time this building was sold out, Amari Rogers' dad, T. Martin, was the quarterback for Tennessee who led the balls to a victory here on their way to a national championship. And what a huge play this is. Forty misses the open field tackle. How much has Clemson been waiting for Rogers to come back and make plays like this? They may take a peek just to see if he was inbounds. 
all the way to the end zone, but two missed tackles, Cordy and then Evan Foster misses as well with a poor angle. But how about Amari Rogers back in under six months Ooh, from an ACL? Unbelievable. The previous play is under further review. Yeah, they're going to look to see if he stepped out of bounds. But I guess that close to the sideline, Cordy felt like he could shove him out of bounds, but wrap him up. Yeah. This is selling out the entire defense up here trying to make a play still in bounds. It looked like his heel was in the air there. I don't think his heel touched in bounds. Watch the heel. I don't know. You think that heel is the heel? You know, down. it's interesting. It looks like there's almost a green indentation right there <laughs> in the white line, yeah. which is where his heel was. Yeah. But he wasn't stepping on the paint, but it almost looks like there should have been white there where his heel did touch the ground. Well, he timed that up pretty well, didn't he? Hit that green spot. When we went to practice the end of last week before the game against Amy, a huge brace on his right knee. They weren't sure if Amari would play last week. He did. He got a huge hand when he came into the game. As the fans know, how hard he worked to come back from an ACL. I just don't think you can look at that video and say without a question that his left heel is touching. But you can see you know, there's a couple little indentations there. And right where his heel is, there's a little triangle into the white line where there should be some paint. I guess, Dave Katai, if you're the home team and you didn't paint the field well enough, I guess it's your own fault. It looks like a foul line down the minor league ballpark. But as, as Kirk said, that heel is over the sideline, but that doesn't mean he's out of bounds. Right. He has to compress and touch right. the sideline. I thought his heel stayed up. but I don't see enough here to change this call, in my opinion. You can't factor in that there should have been a line there. <laughs> <laughs> that there's a chunk out of the line. I don't think he can do that, Sean, to be no. honest with you. you. And what a turn of events. To me, you go just from, you go from an interception by Trevor Lawrence. First and goal at the nine for a Syracuse team that's desperate to get back into the game. And DeVito throws the pick. And then a couple plays later, they potentially give up this big touchdown to Amari Rogers. Stout, physical, yards after the catch type of slot receiver. Well, I guess the question would be, did he touch any white line there even with the heel off the ground? They've certainly looked at it for a long time. Mari Rogers had four catches in their win last year against Syracuse. They also dropped a punt on their own 10 yard line, which was a big play in that game. They turned it over three times. At the further review, the rule on the field stands. Got to be down. That, that foot has to be down clearly on the sideline to reverse that call. Well, an inexperienced quarterback in DeVito making a big mistake. And Trevor Lawrence has to feel a lot better. He's off the hook for that interception that put Syracuse inside the 10-yard line after the return by Christopher Frederick. So, as you've said a couple of times tonight, Kirk, here's the extra point by Potter. When you're playing the best team in the country, you can... Well, yesterday, Syracuse University celebrated the grand opening of the Barnes Center at the Arch. Yeah, that is an eSports room. It's a health, wellness, and recreation complex. The focus of the center, the physical and mental health of the student population here. It's right next to the Carrier Dome. I have the honor of emceeing the ceremony yesterday. Named for Steve Barnes, former chairman of the Board of Trustees here, who gave the lead gift with his wife Deborah. You saw the video. We went and worked out there today, our family, this morning. It's it's unbelievable. Yeah, that's great. A lot of cons lot of things happening here. It seems it's like a big weekend. Yeah. Homecoming weekend, reunion weekend, the dedication of the Barn Center at the Arch. Kickoff by BT Potter is a touchback. ACC Network is your home for more ACC sports. Get ACCN.com. That's where you want to visit. Just check for providers in your area. If you don't see your provider listed, contact them to get them to carry ACC Network. How about Syracuse? If they, if you think about before this game started, we would have told them, guys, you're going to be in the red zone against this Clemson defense three times, and you're going to have to settle for two short field goals and throw an interception. So no touchdowns in three attempts. 
As you said, they're making mistakes that you just can't make. Logan Rudolph dumped Mo Neal for a loss. How great is this to see for Clemson? Other defensive ends stepping up and making plays besides Xavier Thomas. They're waiting for Rudolph and Foster and K.J. Henry. They're playing up to five different defensive ends along with Thomas and my, uh, my school. So they're waiting to see who's going to become the guy. Right now they're trying to stay fresh by rotating a lot of different bodies in. Dabble said the other day, we don't have the first round picks like last year. We have strength in numbers. Flag down probably for a hole based on where it was thrown. DeVito learned the lesson that time and just threw the ball away. And Logan Rudolph that time. There wasn't any blitz. There wasn't anything to try to confuse anybody. It's just power. Again, another play by 34. Just pushing the tackle. Veterello right into the backfield. How nice is that for Clemson oh, and a holding call? The penalty is declined. Third down. Carlos Veterello guilty of the hold. Nice couple plays there by young Logan Rudolph. Brent Venables is playing a lot more three down linemen, two linebackers, six defensive backs. They rotate, and that's the strength and the experience now, the back end. You'll see five or six defensive backs in there, but very often only three D linemen. Screen, Mo Neal. Ooh, that hit hard as he goes down at the 30 yard line. Here's the next future young star in this defensive front. 13, true freshman Tyler Davis. Watch him on his screen. Watch his speed. Keep in mind he's about 300 pounds, never gives up on that play, and is able to get back, chase down that fast running back and Abdul Adams. Good effort there. What's amazing, Kirk, how quickly it went from it looked like this is going to be... Here we go. A game and a seat squirmer for Clemson again against Syracuse and the decision by DeVito and the interception by Goodrich just totally changed the complexion of the game. Mari Rogers chopped out of bounds after a 52 yard punt. Abdul Adams the tackle. There's some delays this is a sloppy ending in Ames, especially for Cyclone fans. Iowa punting 90 seconds ago. Iowa State's Deshante Jones trying to field it. Daytron Young runs into his own teammate fumble. Iowa recovers, holds on the win 18 to 17. Sean Herbie, back to you. Well, that is a long day and what a bizarre way to decide the game at the very end. Here, Clemson leading 24 to 6. Travis Etienne tripped up after he crossed the 35 yard line. Looked like after an 87 yard touchdown in their last series, there might be another very long touchdown. He's only had 58 yards rushing, and this is one of the ways, of course, they, they get Etienne the football like any great back, and he's not able to quite get on track and he can catch the ball to the backfield. Just get him out in space where he can make people miss and have room to run. And a career high four catches last week against AM. He told us last week one of his goals in the offseason to make himself a better pass receiver, more of an option in the passing game. Lawrence hit as he threw, and it was too high for Joseph and Gata. Lakeem Williams brought the pressure from the linebacker spot. This offense to me is, is is still believe it or not a work in progress. I mean we're in the third game of the year This thing's gonna change Drastically by the time they get to game five game six game seven, but it, it's it's just not quite clicking And you don't they're out of rhythm, you know with the passing game and the running game and how they can complement one another Lawrence rolls to his right and throws an interception Trill Williams Trill Williams with one man to beat, and he's taken down at the three-yard line by Travis Etienne. Well, you just said it, Herbie. It's surprisingly out of sync, given all the talent they have, most of them returnees. Yeah, you watch this play, and you'll see right here, right in the middle, safety is just sitting there. I mean, the entire time, Trevor Lawrence is rolling to his right. I just don't think he ever saw him. He threw it right into his chest, which again is just so unlike Trevor Lawrence. But a miscue. Williams is there to capitalize, and the progressive pylon cam shows it. He's just, just a little bit short of getting to the goal line. 
three times they've been in the red zone, only two field goals. Crowd wanted DeVito to get the ball snap with Clemson defenders running off and on. Javion Howard stopped shy of the goal line. Isaiah Simmons, 41-yard return of the interception. That last play, if you're Tommy DeVito, he's on a boot there. It, that's what you say to the coach. If he keeps that, he could have walked to the end zone. Nobody's expecting him to hold on to the ball. High formation. Yeah. Howard again. And he stopped at the one-yard line. Tanner Muse, the safety up there. When we visited with Dino Babers yesterday, he talked a lot about Tanner Muse. He yeah. thinks he's oh, a tremendous yeah. player. He has scored touchdowns against Syracuse in the games in 16 and 17. He's basically a linebacker. It's, it's been a safety in this defense for the last few years and doing more downhill tackling. There it is. There it is. And Isaiah Simmons tripped him up using his great athleticism to make the play on DeVito. Without it being Simmons out there, that's a walk-in touchdown because most guys don't have that kind of quickness at that size. Is it a down too late? Did they wait till third down? If you call that on second down, I think it's you walk down. But that time on third down, an alert Isaiah Simmons starts to collapse, but at the same time just has an eye just in case on DeVito. Abdul Adams, the tailback. DeVito steps up. DeVito down to the one-yard line, but not in. James Skelski stops him, and Clemson takes over on downs. A nightmare inside the 10-yard line for Dino Babers and the Syracuse Orange. Uh, the credit goes to Nolan Turner on one side and also backup linebacker Spectre staying with their receivers. No one to throw the ball to. They thought they meant might catch him napping, allow him to make the throw. Everybody's covered, and he has to run into the teeth of the defense. Four times they've been in the red zone, and they can't come away with any touchdowns. Another view from the progressive pylon cam. He's well short. Dabo Sweeney's defense holds. He told us on the call this week how proud he was of the defense in the game you called. Down in the goal line, yep. fight, showing heart. They did it against Georgia Tech. Starting to become a little bit of a, of a characteristic of this Clemson defense. They allowed just one touchdown last week against a and Lawrence, good decision to keep. Lawrence galloping up the middle of the defense and slides down short of the 30-yard line. He said he worked in the summer to be a more explosive runner. He thinks he is, and he demonstrated it there. But AM's only touchdown last week came with six seconds to go yeah. in a 24-10 win for Clemson. Nothing fires up a defensive coordinator more than his team bowing up. When they're when they're put in a tough spot remember when trevor lawrence chased down that georgia tech interception they didn't give up a touchdown those are the kind of things you can build a character and build a team around deep ball one on one and the catch made by ross antoine cordy in coverage where they just win so many of the 50 50 balls with their size and athleticism yeah. out wide and cordy's 5-8 and Justin Ross is 6-4. And, and the smart thing by Trevor Lawrence is he puts it up in the air where Justin Ross can adjust to the ball and then high point the ball over the undersized defensive back, Cordy. Ross was a talented basketball player growing up in Alabama, wanted to quit football and keep playing basketball. And his high school coaches convinced him that was a bad idea. And obviously they were right. Amari Rogers. Gain of two. They were under five minutes to go in the third quarter. Clemson leading 24 to six. You know, and you could be a fan of either one of these teams. Kirk could probably think we should be ahead by more. Oh yeah. Dominated a lot of the night. Really couldn't pull away. Then Syracuse has a couple of great chances to get right back in the game. Couldn't take advantage of it. You're right. Both sides. Take the ETN, the bullet down the middle, J.C. Chalk, touchdown, but a flag down, back behind the line of scrimmage.
holding offense number 62 10 yard penalty second down Cade Stewart backup offensive lineman they have four senior starters on that offensive line and Cade Stewart in there right now for Sean Pollard it looked like Josh Black had worked his way around and trying to get pressure on Trevor Lawrence and locked him up. And Sean Pollard and Tanner Muse are the only two players of the 72 dressed for Clemson tonight who started in the game here at Syracuse two years ago. They have 20 players of the 72 who played in that game. There aren't many Clemson Tigers who were here two years ago for that upset defeat. Love the design of that play. Kind of that, that sweep, that pitch sweep out to ETN to get the linebackers and safety's attention. And then the quick throw to the tight end. Of course, it comes back. And a tough break for J.C. Chalk. That would have been his first career touchdown. And his ninth career catch. Lawrence looked deep and checked it down to ETN. And he gets stopped at the 27-yard line by Evan Foster. When you whiff... At the beginning of the play as a defense, look out. This, this guy can take it to the house in a hurry. Third down and 11. Lawrence, 18 out of 33, two touchdowns and two interceptions. ETN stopped well short of the first down by Lakeem Williams, and Dabo Sweeney will send the field goal team on. So a mixed bag again tonight for Trevor Lawrence. And here's BT Potter. One for one tonight, right down the middle from 40. This one from 37. And that's good. And the lead is 27 to 6 for the Tigers with 224 to go in the third quarter at Syracuse as they go for their 18th consecutive win. At roof of the carrier dome is being replaced as we speak. It's an air-supported roof as it has been since the building opened in 1980, but they're going to a solid fixed roof. They spend $118 million to renovate the dome in a number of ways over the next few years. The Syracuse offense would like to renovate their red zone attack tonight. You have four different chances deep in Clemson territory. Give, give Clemson's defense a lot of credit. I mean, they've made plays defensively to keep Hughes out of the end zone. Four attempts, two field goals, an interception, and right here, turnover on down. So, combination of some frustrating moments and some bad, bad decisions by Tommy DeVito and some really good play by the Clemson defense. Yeah, that, to me, was the key play of the game. Oh, yeah, it turned it up. Interception by DeVito, just a bad decision. Turned it around. Nowhere to throw it. It was first down. He had the... Building back in the game, about to make it a one-score game if you could punch it in. And here they come on offense now, down by 21. And Kirk, I go back to the point you made earlier about Tommy DeVito and Eric Dungey. You know, down in the red zone, you had to respect Dungey as a runner. Oh, yeah. But now you really don't have to respect no. DeVito as a runner. No. And he could bang it in. There's Eric Dungey, who's come back to finish his degree here at Syracuse. Yeah, it's a very different attack, and that athletic quarterback extending is something you can't predict. O'Neal straight ahead for about a one-yard gain. Darnell Jeffries in there again, backups out there for Clemson. They play a lot of players. Last year they averaged 72 and a half players per game. That's 17 more per game than any of the other teams that made the college football playoff. I think Dabo's upset they can only dress 72 on the road here tonight. Everybody playing Clemson this year better get used to this look. See three defensive linemen, two linebackers walked up, and six defensive backs. And even with three men rushing, they get after DeVito, who dives ahead short of the first down at the 33-yard line. 
You know, and typically, Brent Venables would use that package on just third down. They're using it on first down, second down, and third down. And it goes back to what you and I talked about, the versatility of the secondary with Tanner Muse, Kayvon Wallace. Guys like this allow them Isaiah to do that. Simmons. Isaiah Simmons allow them to be almost linebackers. And here's a look at it now. Muse as if he might blitz. Muse here, Skowski here. Simmons back deep. Ordinarily, yep. he's a linebacker, but he can be a safety. And you know, Baberson you never know where they're coming from, and it's Simmons right up the middle. Dino you know, Baber said it yesterday, and he was right. It's about 11, 12, and 19 on the defense yep. because they are so versatile, you never know where they're playing. Well, they can play back, and they can play up, and they can blitz. And look how he disguises, disguises, and then comes. The offensive line's not going to be able to account for all these blitzing backers. And this is, again, this is the new package. This is the answer to losing Christian Wilkins and Dexter Lawrence and Austin Bryant and Colin Farrell, all those great front four players. This is that answer that Dino Babers and the rest of the ACC is going to have to come up with when you face Venables and the Tigers D. Here's Lynn J. Dixon, one down by Eric Coley, backup safety. And Clemson taking over on another big play by the defense. Lynn J. Dixon remains the running back, 30 seconds to go, third quarter. Dixon wrestled down after he bounced off Kenneth Ruff, big number 45 was Andrew Armstrong who made the play and Tigers don't need to snap it again here in the third quarter. So they have 27 points tonight after being held to 24 last week that ended a 16 game streak in which they had scored at least 27 points and that was a school record. They have 27 tonight, and they're looking for more as we go to the fourth quarter here in Syracuse. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Tonight, the Clemson record for a game is 12 against Furman back in 1996. That was a big concern for Dino Babers. Could they block this Clemson defense? I know it was your biggest concern with an eye toward a competitive game here tonight. Trevor Lawrence, another jump ball, and this time Cornell Powell couldn't come down with the ball with Scoot Bradshaw on coverage. You made the observation during the break, the look at the effort here by Powell, the deep reserve and wide receiver getting a chance here. End of the third quarter, the uh, third largest crowd here has emptied out pretty quickly. Yeah, they, they, they got out of here in a hurry. And it just felt different after the DeVito interception. Yeah, that took I all the, the air out, thought, out of the building. They thought, man, here, here's our chance to start this second half in the very next play of the interception. Well, it would have been a game, and then you wonder about the psyche of the Clemson team. Here we go again with a battle with Syracuse. Lawrence is passed behind Jalen Lay, the freshman tight end, getting a chance to play. They lost a couple. to create and extend plays it's another thing to locate an open receiver right now locate him right now get the ball out of your hands he's late and by the time he ends up throwing that ball you just can't you can't end up making the throw P.T. Potter trying to kick his third field goal tonight from a tough angle and that one's off the left upright no good from 33 yards plus two of the best to ever do it Peyton Manning and J.J. Watt go one-on-one -on -one Sunday NFL countdown tomorrow morning at 10 on ESPN. Abdul Adams, the ball carrier for Syracuse. You big NFL fan? You, yes, sir. You follow it on Sundays? I do. Do you have a team? Or you I just prefer the college game. Yeah, I me too. enjoy watching the NFL. Who's your, do you have a team? Or you just well, the Arizona on? Cardinals, America's team. Yeah, of course. Of course. And uh, John Hart was a dear friend, so we cheer uh, for the ball. Yeah, that's good. Me, they they good. Patriots. Yeah, of course. So I'm basically cheering for about half. Everybody, yes. Yeah. That's like me. I, I kind of cheer for individuals after you cover them in college. Right. And then 
watch him go up and play in the NFL. Love to see him do well. All start. Offense number 63. Five-yard penalty, but second down. Living in Nashville, yeah, I grew up a Bengals fan. I grew up in Southwest Ohio, so I always liked the Bengals. But I've lived in Nashville for the last eight years, and then my guy Mike Brable ends up moving down and become the head coach with the Titans. And I've kind of been becoming a Titans fan the last few years too. So you're all over the map. Yeah, kind of like you. Yeah. Reserve the right to yeah. cheer for every team. Yes. And I love Brady, so they oh, have that too. Yeah. Yeah, he's not the greatest of all time. DeVito running for his life again. There is a flag down. Yeah, the, the pressure's been there all night. Brent Venables, as he always does, mixing up the looks, confusing the inexperienced offensive line. Isaiah Simmons has been on the blitz. We've seen the linebackers, Smith and Skowski. We've seen him rush three Holding and get there. Offense. The penalties decline. Third down. And obviously, we criticized DeVito for the decision on the uh, critical interception. Yeah. But, you know, when you have pressured all night long like he has been, you know, that Start seeing ghosts. your mind. Start seeing some ghosts. Yeah. Eight sacks tonight. It feels like 15. Mm -hmm. Well, it probably easily could be. Abdul Adams up the middle. I, I'm just going to keep saying, I, we've gotten spoiled with this defense over the last couple years with the defensive line, but this is going to be a really fun defense to watch people try to move the ball against because Brent Venables, to his credit, has changed to his personnel. You know, we always talk about offensive coordinators. Do they have a scheme or do they adjust to their quarterback and their personnel? Same with defense. Defensive coordinators need to adjust to their strength, and his strength is that depth in the secondary and the linebacker play. Well, that's what I want to ask you about is Hoffrichter comes on to punt again. And I'll ask you about it after the commercial, which we're going to take after the fair catch by Amari Rogers. Liverpool. They will come from near and far to have their legendary hot dogs. Mentioned uh, Tim Green. That's Tim Green's hometown, Liverpool, just up the road. The technical crew staying in uh, Liverpool. And Trevor Lawrence, they start out this possession in the pistol, leading by. Three touchdowns with 13 minutes to go. Great to see Amari Rogers back. Came back from the ACL. Returned last week, and everybody marveled that he was able to come back to that AM game. Has made a big impact tonight. None other, this, nothing bigger than this one right here. Stiff arm, yards after the catch. Low center of gravity, almost like a running back, and what he can do in catching the football. More importantly, the leadership. He's the leader, one of the great leaders of this offense for the Tigers. It's big to have three back. Late pitch to ETN. And with his speed, he has the first down run down by Andrew Armstrong. So Amari Rogers, that long touchdown is 121 yards receiving. Two touchdowns total on four catches. And T. Higgins has 150 yards receiving on seven catches. So they have combined for more than half of Clemson's total yardage tonight. They're at 495 as a team. T.J. Chase, the catch, his second of the season. Eric Coley, the tackle. Let's send you back to the studio. Thanks, Sean. After Kentucky missed a 35-yard field goal to take the lead in the final minute, Florida trying to run out the clock. Just runs for a TD. 76-yard score to seal it. The Gators overcame a double-digit deficit in the second half for the win, guys. Wow. Really tough loss for Kentucky. Struggled so much over the years against Florida. Lynn J. Dixon, tough run. Flag down on the play. Personal foul, face mask, defense number nine. 15-yard pillow to be added to the end of the play. Evan First down. Foster, guilty of the face mask. Good safeties on this on this defense with Foster and Cisco and Cordy. They've had their hands full tonight against this Clemson offensive attack and time Foster just trying to hold on for dear life. Lawrence, a little RPO action. Davis Allen, the true freshman tight end, who the coaches think is going to be a star. He has the catch, his first 
career catch 6 6 240 out of Calhoun Georgia didn't get there until the summer but he's picking it up quickly a lot of those freshmen rolled mid semester back in January and have all spring practice they had a need at tight end so he and the other true freshman Jalen Lay number 85 both seeing action earlier than perhaps the coaches might have liked then Jay Dixon chopped out of bounds by Alan Stritzinger you know, the evacuation of the crowd, do you think it's just a coincidence that they shut off the adult beverages after the third quarter? I Well, you, you have more experience than, than I do, but I, I would, I'm, I'm venturing to guess that... Well, they made an announcement that alcohol's not served after the third quarter, and there was a booing. And then... And you said they were getting pretty aggressive pretty early today. For their, oh, yeah. Their they, game were, they were down on around Marshall Street very early in the afternoon. So, uh, Three game for this one. Lawrence had to get rid of it quickly. Another. Oh, oh, oh my goodness! What a catch by Frank Ladson for a Clemson touchdown. <laughs> There's another true freshman for Clemson. And got a 10 gets a lot of the attention. You just talked about the tight end, and, and now Frank Ladson out of Miami. Look at this effort. He's falling backwards and holds on to the football. Incredible concentration. And Trevor Lawrence is a happy man to have these wide, wide receivers to throw the football to. <laughs> That's incredible. Ho hum. Yeah, they're just another day at the office. Yeah, they're just reloading with wide receivers now. And Clemson, Latson, another tall receiver. 6'3, 195 out of South Dade High School in Miami. You'll help people affected by Hurricane Dorian. Your donation will support Red Cross preparation response recovery efforts in the U.S. and the Bahamas. Go to redcross.org slash ESPN or call 1 800 Red Cross to donate now. New kickoff man for Clemson, Steven Sawicki, fifth year senior, transfer from North Carolina AT. The second career kickoff as a Clemson Tiger. He had a kickoff in the opener against Georgia Tech. This one down to the goal line and being brought back by Sean O'Reilly, who's down at the 15. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. It's a quarterback comparison, and even though he's thrown a couple more interceptions tonight, the 395 passing yards for Trevor Lawrence is a career high, surpassing the 393 he put on South Carolina last year. And Tommy DeVito running for his life a lot of the night. Yeah, he has not had a lot of help up front, but I think the bigger story is Trevor Lawrence, almost 400 yards, so kind of a, kind of a, a mixed bag, had some good, had some moments he'd love to have back. Um, and just right now, not not quite, I think, that Trevor Lawrence that eventually we're going to see at some point this year when this offense finds its rhythm. John Riley put the hand off, turned the corner, got collared by Isaiah Simmons. Well, you and I were talking on the phone with Dabble Swing the other day about Trevor Lawrence, and we've both done this for a long time. So it's very rare that you see a quarterback at our job where you say, okay, that guy is clearly going to be a star at the NFL level. You know, a lot of guys say, hey, he'll have an NFL future, but there are very few Peyton Mannings or Andrew Lux. When you just watch him in college, you knew this guy's going to be one of the best quarterbacks, maybe the best in the league for a long time. We asked Dabo about... Trevor Lawrence, and I feel that way about him. I think most people think he's going to be the number yeah. one pick overall in the draft. Uh, and he said he's he's Peyton Manning more athleticism. He's a better yeah. runner. Yeah, I, I mean, physically, you, you fall in love with him at 6'6", 220. It, he's got everything you're looking for as far as the ball just comes out of his hand. But to me, tonight, all of last year, are examples of why quarterbacks need to play. And, and the only way you can get to a point where you're quote unquote NFL ready is to see more blitzes, see more multiple coverages, see pre-snap versus post-snap and be comfortable with that. It's one thing to look at it in film. It's another thing. You just got to keep getting reps. And that's the area that the average fan, you just can't tell. That's where he's got to continue to grow as a quarterback. Will Sweeney, the fair catch of the Hoff Richter punt. Another good punt, 51 yards. Well, the All-State bus here on the Syracuse campus helping us keep up with all the mayhem on a busy Saturday. Kirks, what's your All-State 
mayhem moment today. Yeah, the, the mayhem moment is Maryland and all the hype took on Temple Tough. Goal line stand by Temple after a huge punt return. Looked like Maryland might pull it out, but instead Temple gets it done. It's second year in a row now. Temple has knocked off Maryland, but this one felt a little different with Mike Loxley getting a lot of momentum going these first couple weeks. Lawrence's night is over. Chase Bryce came in for Lawrence when Trevor was hurt in the first half last year at Clemson. Red shirt sophomore from Grayson, Georgia, hands it off to Darian Rencher, who got tackled by Alan Strissinger. So Lawrence finishes 22 of 39, as we mentioned, a career high 395, with three touchdowns passing and two interceptions. He also ran for a touchdown. Bryce with Wrencher still the running back. Brandon Berry makes the tackle on Wrencher. Yeah, the game started pretty fast for Trevor Lawrence and the Tigers offense. They, they made some plays and then things kind of, a, as we said, kind of a mixed bag. Uh, he's had moments where I think he's waited and, and kind of locked in on receivers. Moments where he hasn't quite seen the, the defense and read it properly. So, uh, and then other moments where he's had some help, you know, had some great plays by the wide receivers. So, a, a night where you get a win, you're happy, obviously, and you look forward to getting back to the film room and continuing to learn and grow. There's Bryce taking off running. And he crosses midfield before he's tackled by Eric Coley. Red shirt sophomore safety from Manlius, New York, just outside Syracuse. That opened up. Nice job by Wrencher, the back leading the way. You know, when I look at Chase Bryce, I think of that fourth down last year against Syracuse that kept Clemson's undefeated season alive, kept their national championship hopes alive because they were on the ropes. They're down 23 to 13 last year in Death Valley in a game you called. In, in the fourth quarter and had to find a way to come back and win the game and he he converted in a big way He's airing it out deep and just a little too long for Cornell Powell But we talked about Bryce last year. It's game five He starts the league as the number three quarterback probably think he's not gonna play They promote Lawrence to starter Kelly Bryant leaves now He's number two then this happens to Lawrence in the second quarter all of a sudden Bryce has to come into the game He was shaky at the beginning but on fourth and five it was that throw that led to the game-winning touchdown with 41 seconds to go. We asked Dabo Sweeney, was that the biggest play of the season last year? He said, well, without it, we don't go 15 at all. Right. And I want to fully say it was the biggest play, but I mean, I think it's one of those that you know lives forever in Clemson history in a perfect 15 and 0 yeah. season in national championship. They might not have that without it. I was on the field before the game like I do every Saturday and just talking to coaches and and Dabo and I were talking about Chase Bryce and, and he said you know I would look at him and I would say he has a chance to in, in the ACC to be one of the more looked at as one of the more talented quarterbacks in the ACC he's the backup behind Trevor Lawrence be interesting to see what he does with his future with still two years of eligibility to play after this year Trevor Lawrence will be back next year because he's not eligible for the NFL draft. He is pressured. He steps up and fires incomplete. Intended for Joseph Ngata. Brandon Berry put the heat on Bryce. Stay tuned after the game, except on the West Coast, for your late local news over most of these ABC stations. Be sure to tune to ESPN later for Sports Center, the highlights of the day in sports. Here in Syracuse, it's Channel 9, the ABC affiliate. Wonderful feature about our producer, Bill Bennell. You were kind enough to mention it's a special weekend for our family, but Bill Bennell grew up in North Syracuse. Syracuse University graduate, hadn't been here for a game in 35 years. In fact, Jeff McCormick is one of the uh, captains of that team's here tonight as part of uh, homecoming weekend. He's in the SU Letter Winners of Distinction, the Hall of Fame here. So you've done lacrosse, you obviously done basketball, baseball, football. What's your what's your favorite as a play by the luge in the uh, Olympics? Oh, really? Yeah. It was an article said I was the best luge announcer, 1992, and then my family reminded me you were the only luge announcer. So, uh, uh, yeah, bobsled and luge. Now uh, that uh, I enjoy the variety, it's one of the reasons I love working at ESPN. We have all the sports. Uh, WAR has been a great training ground for so many of us. Luke Benson, the true freshman tight end from Pennsylvania, with a second catch 
of the night and of his career. But it's, it's so fun to me to look over to our right and see the WAER booth and realize yeah, that, you know, guys like Mike Tirico and Dave O'Brien and Dave Pash and uh, so many of the broadcasters who've come through here really started at WAER. Listen, it, would you say this is the, probably the number one school in the country for sports broadcasting? I mean, be, not even being biased. Probably right out of that sense. Done. See, if I say that on the air, then I don't have to send in a, a donation. There's the WAER folks. It's the lads right there. They'll have our job shortly. Syracuse on offense. Aaron Hackett. You know, it's interesting, too, here, the, the lineage. It goes back to Marty Glickman, class of 39, who was Are a great kidding? football player here. Look at this. And then because he became a great announcer in the New York area with the Knicks and the Giants, you know, Costas, Albert, and oh Stockton all want to come here. And then because those guys are stars, Tariko, Ian Eagle, Beth Muller, Sal Pash. I came here because we wanted to be those people. Yeah. And, you know, I mentioned Dave O'Brien. There are many more. Dave O'Brien, of course, our lead play-by-play -play guy on the ACC Network. But uh, yes. Marty Glickman was an accidental announcer. Syracuse across the 40-yard line now. Marty Glickman told the story many times. So he was a great track star here, wound up an Olympic athlete, and a great football player. And apparently there was a high school football game that was going to be on the radio, and they needed an announcer. Marty was so popular, they went to him, and he said, I don't know how to announce a game. And I'm not going to, I'm botching the details of this, but it was something we'll pay you 10 bucks. Well, you know, 10 bucks in 1930, whatever. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. And he was good at it, great at it, obviously, and got the bug. And uh, so that's really what started it here. People would listen to Marty and say, I want to be Marty Glickman, so I'm going to go to Syracuse. And then it's Marv and Bob Costas and Dick Stockton. Those are the guys I grew up idolizing. I mean, if you're an aspiring broadcaster coming out of high school, you know, some guys just, they, that's their thing. That's what they want to do. Where else do you even think about? Well, not to be uh, falsely modest, I'm not. I would not get into Syracuse today. I said at the award ceremony last night. Not after your math. Here, I wanted to go to Notre Dame, and I, I, I wanted to go to Notre Dame, and they didn't take me. Which turned out to be a blessing because uh, sure. no offense to Notre Dame, but yeah. this was clearly the right place for somebody who wanted to be a sports broadcaster. Yeah, and it still is. Deep throw by Devito, flag down to the secondary, intended for Tristan Jackson. The Anthony Williams had the coverage. Stay tuned for the Ford wrap-up after the game with Cassidy Hubbard. Pass and affairs, defense number 20, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Williams called for the penalty. So a lot of streaks are going to be extended by Clemson here tonight. We can take a look again at the uh, pass interference. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> But it's going to be the 18th win in a row for Clemson, which is at the new school record with 17. They had tied their mark set in 2014 and 15. It's going to be their 20th straight win in the month of September. It is going to be their 32nd straight win on a Saturday. So, so the next question is, yes. who's going to compete with them? Who's going to give them? Who's that sneaky game like well, Syracuse has been the last couple of years? It would be Texas A&M last week and yeah. then Syracuse. Syracuse yeah. picked second in the Atlantic Division in the preseason poll behind Clemson, but I mean, I, I, I don't see, I any don't of those see anybody. No. Anybody. No. And the game in Charlotte. I mean, who's going to come out of the other side that's going to go to Charlotte and compete with this team in the ACC championship? Why don't you make Charlotte next week? No, no, no. Yeah. In the ACC championship in December, no, nobody. Incomplete pass. Third down and 12 is intended for Nikeem Johnson. So here's a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by PlayStation. Look at the AP poll. Alabama winner, Georgia hammered Arkansas State, and LSU a big win. Oklahoma not surprising with a huge lead at UCLA. Uh, bad news for Florida. They're in the top ten, got a huge win tonight in Lexington, but they lost Felipe Franks, a very talented quarterback who's out for the year. And don't sleep on your Buckeyes. 
I'm not Off at all. Off to a great start. I, I, and I think they're playing, I, I said before the season started, they're, they're playing with a chip on their shoulder with all the talk about what's Ohio State going to do without Urban Meyer, without Dwayne Haskins. They're, they're kind of playing with a purpose right now with Ryan Day after the first three weeks. Andrew Booth back up. Cornerback freshman. Yeah, true freshman. Really talented young player. Good effort to try to go up there. Make a play on that football. Well, speaking of Ohio State, this is your first time broadcasting here, but you did play here. Yeah, way back. And you came won. in here. Yeah, we were big underdogs. Had uh, Eddie George, Robert Smith. Joey Galloway actually was on that team, but he tore his ACL the week before. So we lost by, you know, our most talented receiver. We came in here as big underdog. Back then, Syracuse top 10, top 5, top 10 kind of team. Right. Well, many, many years under uh, Dick McPherson and then Paul Pasqualoni after Coach Mack left you, the You're such a Syracuse NFL. guy. You remember Marvin Graves and Quadri Ishmael, sure. Shelby Hill. Don McPherson. Yes. Uh, here yeah. tonight. Just came out with a new book, which he was signing at the bookstore today. Clayton Welch is the new quarterback, fifth-year senior from Chico, California. Getting a chance to play. Coaches had nice things to say about him in our meetings yesterday. Strong arm and tough. Played two years at Butte College out in California. You know who uh, played at Butte I College? Do know One of the I great quarterbacks know. of this it's area in the NFL. A, really a, a future Hall of Fame. Grimes with Aaron Wright. <laughs> Incomplete pass for Nikeem Johnson with Sheridan Jones, another freshman backup corner. So a tough night for Tommy DeVito. You know, under duress all night long. It was an offensive line that had struggled in the first two games, so he had a feeling it would continue against this Clemson bunch. He's tough. He kept getting up, but uh, when they had a chance to really make it a game, he threw a terrible interception. Yeah, eight, eight sacks on a night, but really doesn't tell the whole story of, of the amount of pressure that he faced with uh, an offensive line that was just overmatched against Clemson in the blitz scheme of Brent Venables. Uh, and then, you know, just when it looked like they might be down and out, they did get the big interception themselves to put themselves down at the nine-yard line at the beginning of the second half, and then he threw that inexplicable interception that, that just changed the game around. Michael Dukes, true freshman, running back in behind Bryce. A lot of the people around the Clemson program will tell you they think Bryce is the second-best quarterback in the ACC. Yeah. Sure do. Later tonight on ESPN, after the Texas Tech Arizona game, stay tuned for Sports Center with Stan and Neil. They'll have the latest on Antonio Brown's status for Sunday's Patriot game against the Dolphins, plus a review of this day in college football and a breakdown of tonight's heavyweight bout in Las Vegas. Sports Center after football on ESPN and also streaming live on the ESPN app. Ches Malusi, another freshman running back, shows his speed. He breaks free. Ches Malusi off to the races and a touchdown for Clemson. 57 yards. True Come freshman up. out of Naples, Florida, just his seventh career carry and his first touchdown. Well, you've got backup linemen. you got a backup running back, a backup quarterback. That's, that's unbelievable. Nobody's happy. That's the thing you love about Clemson is when the backups come in, the starters are standing there, not sitting on the bench, but they're engaged, they're watching. Nobody's happier for a young player at the Clemson program than the starter that that young man comes in to replace. There's another highly rated prospect, number 139 at any position in the country by ESPN coming up. Oh, this hole just opens up. Look at the blocking. Linebackers out of position. Those big linemen do their job, and Malusi's the, probably the, the, the one that surprised the most. He's been practicing and probably getting a little discouraged like a lot of true freshmen do, not getting maybe the amount of reps that they would like to get with guys like Travis Etienne getting so many reps and Lynn J. Dixon and Brencher, a lot of other guys ahead of him. And all of a sudden, he's in the game in a carrier dome. He got on an airplane. He flew to Syracuse, and he's in the game and lets one rip. Big touchdown. Pablo Sweeney says he wants to play a lot of players. He was a backup player, but got to play a lot when he played for Gene Stallings at Alabama. And good for morale. It's good for player development. Of course, when your backups are four- and five-star recruits, it makes it a little easier to go to the bench as well. 
Well, next Saturday, Saturday night football presented by Wells Fargo will be in Austin, Oklahoma State, and Texas in a Big 12 conference battle. That's Saturday. Uh, 7.30 is a new starting time for you people, is it not? On it is. The show on ABC. Very different. Usually, in the past, was 8 o'clock, and I'm usually... You know, down in the field, they caught me by surprise. Yeah, you week almost one. weren't in the booth for the open last week. Yeah, week yeah, week one. You didn't realize it was seven. Oh, week one. Week one, yeah, or week. I might have been week zero. You know, we had a fun, right. fun start to week zero in Orlando. So if they start the season a, a week earlier next year, it will be week negative one. Yes, I think that's what they're going to go with. Markenzie Pierre gets a carry for Syracuse. Thirty seconds to go here at the Cuse. Now well, I do want to bash Dabo Sweeney while we have one last chance. You know, <laughs> they they had a chance to bring seventy-two players here. Where are the Herb Street twins? Well, they're red shirting as, as oh they are. Yes, as preferred well, walk on. Bash them anyway. And yeah, you go ahead, you go ahead <laughs> bash them. It's a good goal for them down the road. Make that travel squad. Another win for Dabo Sweeney. Trevor Lawrence, a career-high night, although uh, he'll be disappointed because he's the kind of guy who uh, wants to be perfect. Part of what makes him great. Not a tough time.